Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode we're going to be talking about the first glimpses of the upcoming set Empire from Game Trade Magazine. I'm going to discuss the Master Mold Tournament, 300 Modern Tournament that I played in this past weekend. And we're going to answer some listener questions. This is episode 378. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back something. Let the cat in here, because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Uh, and use code DIAL5. Um, get 5% off your order at CoolStuffInc.com. It'll do it. Help you save some money. These booster prices, they've been climbing. Take a little bit off. Take a little bit off, you know. feels pretty good. Uh, and remember, uh, certain butt whoopings will be handed to your opponent if you buy things. Coolstuffinc.com. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like always, joining me in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, the Billion Clicks, Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, I'm over caffeinated, that's for sure. Oh. Man's is full of coffee. It means he's going to take a yes. potty break halfway through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> It's some new brown pants. No, no, no. For that, I would have to be hydrated, and I am the opposite of hydrated. Just oh, okay. highly caffeinated. Uh, dehydrated, <laughs> right. though. So uh, I'm like a. Uh, very, very, very dehydrated. Have you ever heard of perky jerky? It's that caffeinated I jerky. I certainly have not. Nope. Oh well, perky uh, jerky. We're not sponsored by them, but uh, it's caffeinated jerky. So if you need your caffeine while enjoying a dried meat stick, but I was gonna say that's what I'm like. I'm I'm dried meat. That's caffeinated. That's... You look like dried meat. Thank you. I believe it. <laughs> I do. I do. I've gotten the most sunburn slash tan, freckled, whatever you I want to call tell. it this yeah. year. And uh, yeah, I'm not looking too good. That's for sure. The beard makes up for it, though. I've never yeah. seen jerky. I with should beards, shave it though. so that you can see like oh gosh, the tan line the around my mouth. Line? It'd be so <laughs> gross. No, it's like no, do not weird, do that. pasty. Oh uh, yeah. yikes, bro. Oh gosh, no, definitely don't do that. Uh, like always, we like to start the show with what made us happy this week, Simeon. Uh, what made you happy? Um, now, for those listeners that that don't know, the description of the word happy. And like what what that would mean, <laughs> all right, is feeling or showing pleasure, okay, or something that was fortunate uh, to have happened to you, oh. you know. So let's try to keep that in line when we say what made us happy this week. Okay, <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm being targeted for some reason. Um, no idea what it could possibly I've got a, be. I've got a couple things that make me happy this week. So. Uh, this is uh, the official release week of uh, X-Men Rise and Fall, which I'm glad that that's behind us. Um, like some other people, I this set became a, a cherry pick set, which was pretty easy to do. Uh, prices dropped to pretty reasonable amounts pretty quickly. I picked up a absolute ton of generics um, on Cool Stuff, Inc. Uh, when they dropped. It took me a while because I added them to my cart. And then as I was about to check out, I hadn't hit the $100 mark. And I was like, oh, I should add like a booster. And I went and did that. And I got back to my cart and I was still under $100. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll add another booster or like another two boosters. And I get back to my cart and I'm still under $100. And I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, They were selling out of things that were in my cart (laughs) as I was trying to check out. And I was like, oh, no, you fool. So I had to wait until they until they restocked on the pre-order oh, sure. stuff to to get some of the generics that I wanted. But now I'll have plenty of generics. Uh, I already pulled, if you saw the video, I already pulled the uh, Blackheart, which was one of the only super rares that I really cared for. So I'm pretty much done with the set. Um, might pick nice. up some of the chases way later on, but that made me happy. And then also uh, college football kicked off, which do not care at all about. 
Um, I hear that it's fun to watch, but I will never do so. But that does mean that I'll be getting an extra huge boost in pay every week as I put up the scoreboard at night at the nice. end of the, the Husker games. Because nice. somebody was like, you know what? We need a, a human to do what digital <laughs> what digital signs have been doing <clears throat> for like the last 30 years. We need someone to climb up there and hand put up scores. It's very nice. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. When you first showed me um, or showed the Patreon the uh, the picture of you on the billboard, I was like, are those just like little Velcro dots? Is this is this how he does the score? Magnets. Is that what it is? How do they work? Magnets. Yeah. Okay. I was <laughs> like, what in the world? Literally like a... This is how they change the score? You got to be kidding me. It's like, four that my like 100 mind. pound steel sheets because they're quarter inch thick steel sheets and we have to like bolt them to the face of the sign just so that we can stick magnets to it like that the literal only purpose that they we have these huge heavy sheets of metal strapped to the sign is so that we can stick magnets because we have not figured out a better way than magnets (laughs) is that like stored on the sign itself you gotta haul that up to the sign every time uh big sheet yeah, it's stored we on the sign. So in the off okay. season, we just put Goodness. the newer vinyls over it, so you can okay. still see the outline. But most people don't pay attention that closely. Well, yeah, that's uh, dude, that's wild. It's so weird. But hey, a good boost and in, in making that cashola is always good. Yeah, it gives um, me a reason to care about sports. Just, just I mean, enough. I still don't, but whoa, you're from Nebraska and you're not a Huskers fan. Go big red, go Huskies, go. I don't know what they say. Yeah, whatever. Sh- the sh- the old corn shuckers, uh, something like that. The bug eaters, the previous names that we had. Yep, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Look at this deep Nebraskan lore. We always get some good Nebraskan lore from you, Simeon. So I don't know why I should be so surprised. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, what made me happy this week? I I wrestled my first tag team match uh, this past weekend with Midwest All Pro. Uh, I had the total jackpot Lucky Lund as my tag team partner. Uh, he is he also goes by the Neon Cowboy. So we were we were a bit of a rough and rowdy uh, type of team. We of course went against the Enforcer and the Super Enforcer. Uh, joined to the ring, joined by uh, the Bosnian Bruiser, who's sort of uh, the head of the Enforcers. Uh, not good people. Uh, they liked. They certainly cheated a lot. Um, this match, I, I just, it went really well. I, I felt like this is probably one of my my better matches I've had. This is only the third match I've uh, done in front of people, so I I really really enjoyed it. I got to uh, get some good hits in. I got to get hit. Quite a lot. Uh, it was about halfway through the match where I realized I've been doing more wrestling than my partner has been doing. And I was like, huh. Now, why is that? Hmm. Anyways, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say Lucky's a good guy. Um, but I was just like, man, I am. Uh, I'm getting hurt. Uh, yeah. I think you, and there's you one definitely time. did have more ring time. Although, yeah, I feel like your he ring time was got 50-50 split with you being like just beat down quite a bit so yeah i was fun to watch for me though i was yeah the heat was definitely being put on me uh for sure like pretty good um i enjoyed it a lot i I hope people got something out of it uh i had my little brother film it so it was cool he's like bro that was awesome and i was like okay sweet so i know it was a good match so (laughs) it really Um, was i uploaded that it was a good match yeah (laughs) So I, uh, for anybody that wants to see it, it is a uh, Patreon exclusive right now. If you want to, if you've been interested in any of my wrestling uh, adventures or so, or sort of like hearing about them on the podcast, you can check out this match. It was a ton of fun. Um, it was my, my back and my lip still hurt so bad from this map. I, I got elbowed right in the freaking lip and it hurt so bad. Anyways, uh, if you join the that. Patreon for as little, yeah, he does. And it was, it was one of those things where I get hit and I'm just like, Oh, I was kind of like totally rocked and just like, okay, I can go fall now. Uh, it's basically like <laughs> what, what happened. Um, and, and yeah, so if you want to see uh, this wrestling and other Patreon exclusive videos, we have quite a few now. Uh, you can go ahead, 
join the Patreon, and then they're all in the Discord, and we'll probably upload them uh, as well. I'll drop a link on the Patreon website itself for those people that aren't on the Discord that are interested in it. Um, but yeah, that's what made me happy this week. And, and we got a plug for the for the Patreon and all the fun we have on Discord. Can't wait to play some Bad Samaritan later today. This will be the last month of Bad Samaritan for the Discord, and they'll be able to get a chance to win some more prizes, depending on how well they do in Bad Samaritan. As well as this will be the final... Well, by the time you guys are hearing this, it, it'll be almost over for August, but if you join the Discord at $10 or more, you'll get uh, for free, included with everything you normally get at that tier, you'll get a Do You Even Clicks poster. So another, it's another solid reason to join the Patreon. Anyways, Simeon, we got some news. Oh boy, did we. Uh, so from House Rules Gaming, I believe this is from Game Trade Magazine, but we got a little bit of a preview of the new Heroclix Avengers Fantastic Four X-Men all Marvel properties under one title Empire, I think is the full the full set list. That's the full title of the set. Yeah. Uh, not sure what the acronym comes out to, but it's pretty good. Um, no, the, the A4 empire set i guess is what it's going to be uh but yeah we got we got some news we got four new figures we get a look at what a rally die that isn't a red five looks like uh Ooh. we get <laughs> uh a new trait <laughs> and a new team ability plus a uh, kind of look at the the starter set so we're gonna get another one of the starter sets that'll have what is it um is it 10 characters with two dials each and uh, a set of dice and probably, yeah. you know, the special objects, maps, all those kind of fun things. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I'll start with the just a quick overview of the starter set since we don't have a ton of information. I think we've already yeah. seen everyone that's in it, but it's going to have Taskmaster, Madam Hydra, Rogue, Magneto, and then the Super Scroll X-Men. Uh, all of these, of course, are going to be two dials. And so it's going to be those more basic kind of dials. Uh, so yeah. we do get to see some of the powers that the other, the, the quote unquote heroes are going to have. So that one's got Fantastic Four, Wolverine, Spider-Man, uh, Captain Marvel, Invisible Woman, and Human Torch. And just from looking at the powers listed on the cards, Wolverine has no speed powers. He has a single blades power for attack. And then he's got two defense powers, toughness that goes to regeneration. Uh, and then Spider-Man likewise has uh, charge with incapacitate and super senses. So they're all going to be these very basic powers that we've kind of we've kind of grown to expect from these starter sets, I guess. Yeah, I mean, after all, like they're going to have whatever one other card anyways that'll give them like slightly cooler stuff you know maybe a little bit of move and attack i think most of them do but they never have a crazy like hypersonic like it'll definitely be very new player friendly uh powers and now i don't know if like obviously some powers aren't benched anymore because we got scrolls in this so shape change is going to be in the set right um but yeah and like dude i'm excited i really like the idea that we're going to get three different Super Scroll X-Men dials, like one main oh, yeah. set one, then we get two and of these. it's a great sculpt. Uh, so oh, the villain yeah, side, awesome sculpt. The villain side gets some of the better sculpts. The uh, Human Torch is cool, but Taskmaster, Magneto, and Super Scroll X-Men are all awesome sculpts. So that alone is a decent reason to pick up the starter set. Um, oh, yeah. Not crazy about Spider-Man, Wolverine. Uh, but Captain Marvel's sculpt, it's the same one that we saw with the lightning and hammer effect. So yeah. that's a pretty cool one. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm i hyped for this starter set. This is going to be the first starter set I'll buy since the Masters of Evil one. So, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Dice are cool. I like the I like the A4 idea logo. That's like a lowercase four to a capital. A. No, I guess there's not really a lowercase four, but you know what I mean. Yeah. How that four looks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I call it you know, the cursive lowercase four. four. Cursive it, four. It's okay, like a sure. singular line. Like, I don't know what the yeah. I'm the sure blocky that there's like an one two. Yeah, four. the weird like four that's more of like a block type of deal for like that four. Yeah. Anyways, 
Uh, speaking of scrolls, we do get a new scroll generic. Another scroll spy. Oh, wow. It's been so long since we've had a scroll spy before. So, very simple dial. 20 points, 4 clicks long. Got shape change, got stealth, got the scrolls team ability. Uh, and this is all it has top dial. It has no attack, no defense power, the entirety of the rest of its dial. Um, after that first click, it just has sidestep and close combat expert with one damage. Got four range, one bolt, 20 points, you know, and then we had a secret invasion trait, uh, sideline active. For all characters with this trait, when an opposing character is KO'd, you may choose a scroll spy on your sideline and roll a d6. Uh, I believe it's on a five through six. Create the chosen scroll spy from your sideline on click two in the square that the KO character occupied. So that's really thematic. I really, really like the idea of. Like, oh, that person that died was actually a scroll the whole time. Yeah. Like, that's just, that's so neat. So, and then they they come in on their slightly more attacking click. They'll have an 11 attack sidestep uh, with two damage since they have close combat expert, um, which is kind of cool. So I really like these guys. It gives scrolls some sideline stuff. Gives any team sideline stuff, but it just, you know, and it adds to a scroll team. So I I enjoy them as a simple little generic. Yeah. They're sidekicks. So, um... There is a little bit of, right. I mean, if you only sidelined them and you played it with, uh, what is it, Awesome Andy, the captain that gives shape change, um, they'd have that three or four through six shape change their whole dial, essentially, because they're sidekicks. But yeah, it's it's not the best sidekick I think we've seen by far. Um, yeah. I think it's the sideline active thing that makes it interesting. And hopefully it's not the only scroll generic that we see in the set. Um, but speaking not. of a character that also has the scrolls keyword for some reason, uh, it's, it's a super rare from the set, number 060, Mr. Fantastic. And this is a Mr. Fantastic oh. that's also in uh, some some Tony Stark gear. He's got like an Iron Man helmet and well, just armor on. Uh, but yeah, he's got the Avengers, Fantastic Four, Illuminati, Kree, Scrolls, Armor, and Scientist keywords. And this is the first rally die we've seen that is actually a different color and number. So it's a green with a four. So anytime you or your opponent would roll an attack that has a four in it, you could give Mr. Fantastic here a four on his card. And then his rally trait is gives him a uh, traded plasticity and then he's got free remove his rally die and choose an opposing character within a range and line of fire, which sadly is three range. Um, sure. But if you do choose that character until your next turn, the chosen character gains a mobile, which is real solid because this is one of the first ways we've had where it's a free action to give someone a mobile. It's just like a quick, um, of course, submission hold could do it, but like you could, you could taxi this guy up if he has a rally die, sidestep him, whatever, move him like his full speed. You could do all that stuff to make someone a mobile, and that can be kind of big. Um, he has a 75 point and 30 point dial, so I'm guessing if he gets used, it's mostly going to be at the 30. We've got a lot of decent uh, Mr. Fantastics out there. This one's strange to be a super rare. He's yeah. also got the. Sonic Frequency Emitters trait, which is when Mr. Fantastic is given a move action after resolutions, remove all non-debris terrain markers within range, which might be way bigger than his rally trait, because uh, I believe this just kind of like for 30 points, it does the opposite of Molecule Man. So, um, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, so like Molecule Man can do like a smoke cloud and then he can roll and any non-debris terrain markers he can turn into like barrier, water, hindering, whatever. Or something, yeah. Uh, this Mr. Fantastic, it's going to be uh, within range, so it's going to be within three after a move action. So you might have to sidestep and then move like his nine speed or whatever. But you can get rid of like barrier, uh, yeah, stuff like that, you know water train whatever uh pretty decent not gonna lie that's probably the most interesting part about him and then he has a special attack power that is uh quake giant reach of three so Mm. his top dial he's got two clicks of charge starting with an 11 speed and flight 
He has an 11 attack on his first two clicks with that special Quake and Giant Reach of 3. He's got Impervious, which is yet another suit of armor, Stark, question mark. Um, Outwit with 3 damage, almost his entire dial. He has Outwit his entire dial. His last two clicks are 2 damage, but the rest of his dial is 3. He's got Sidestep from clicks 3 to 4 with Toughness, whereas uh, Iron Man is here in spirit. (laughs) is his toughness. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, and then his 30-point line, he starts with sidestep with 9 speed, a 10 attack with that special attack power, toughness, and then he goes to uh, his last two clicks are charge with the special attack power, 9 attacks, and he gets ESD. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think he's a really interesting character. Um, I know that his rally trait... At least I'm pretty sure the rally does not work with the, uh, who is it? The Doctor Moira McTaggart. It has that character has to have an X Men keyword um, for you to power action yeah. and give it to him. But even then, um, just being able to trigger it on friendly or opposing attack rolls, it's likely he'll get a four at some point. And then being able to make somebody a mobile for free is, it's not nothing. But yeah, I think it's, it's definitely a, not nothing. Might be, I don't know. Clearly, don't think you need more than one of these super rares, but I think that it's a solid option if you don't want to run. Mo- yeah, if you don't want to run Molecule Man and you're running like an Avengers, Scientist, whatever, Fantastic Four team, um, even just having him as like an option to swap if your opponent has a ton of barrier, he gets rid of all of that with a move action. So it's pretty solid. Nice. Speaking of somebody else who's pretty solid in the defense <laughs> department, having impervious as well, we have another super rare. We got Hulkling, your boy Hulkling here. Avengers, Young Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Kree, Scrolls, Cosmic Ruler, Warrior. Goodness gracious, they're just handing the keywords. out these keywords for this guy. He's a captain. Dude's got uh, three traits: power, cosmic, or sorry, cosmic energy. And the scrolls team ability, which is great because he also has shape change on his first three and his last three clicks. Uh, and I love those last three clicks that have uh, shape change super senses. Uh, so oh, yeah. dope. Um, and I mean, obviously, pairs well with his impervious as well. So, and, yeah, cosmic his, energy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, can't outwit it, can't get around so all good. this stuff. It's a, it's a lot of headache. Uh, his first trait is when establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the Cree keyword gain the scrolls keyword and vice versa. So Krolls will also gain the Cree keyword. So that's pretty cool. Uh, a little bit of keyword cheating. Uh, so hopefully, you know, I, I think scrolls are going to get a big boost with this set. So I really hope that this just like pushes them over. I can't think of a ton of like game changing Cree stuff right now. I don't even know if we I, have. Because Captain Marvel movie would have been like the most. Oh yeah. So I think so it's gonna be like the Captain Marvel from like a BPI will be like the only three. Yeah, pre- it's literally here. just just the modern Is Captain Marvels. Yeah, and uh, I guess Doctor Minerva. <laughs> but yeah, the oh. ABPI Captain Marvel, Captain America, <laughs> and the Avengers Captain Marvel, and then Venom Captain Marvel are the only. Wow. The wow. only. <laughs> Uh, modern ones and then Dr. Minerva really, of course uh, who could it really really adds really adds to the scroll team here what a guy but I'm sure we're going to get some cool Kree in this set I assume anyways I mean, obviously he's one of them Dr. Fantastic or Mr. Fantastic already had I guess the Kree and the scrolls keyword so we'll see what happens there uh, but anyways his other trait is leadership mastermind when he uses leadership you may instead generate a 002 scroll spy or a 003 Kree soldier on click one. So we're going to get a generic Kree soldier. That'll be cool. So traded leadership mastermind once again. Mm-mm-mm. Love me some traded powers. And then his last trait is uh, goes with his captain mechanic here. So choose a friendly sidekick and choose Blades, Claws, Fangs or Exploit Weakness. The chosen sidekick can use the standard power this turn. Not, not that great. I mean, we've had a captain before that can hand out blades, so like that's not that cool. Um, but you know, sure, it's a little kind of tacked on, I guess. Uh, he's got a nine-click long dial, so it's a lot to chew through. And for all nine of those clicks, this dude has 
a special attack power. He's got 12 attack for his first three clicks, 11 uh, for the next whatever, uh, seven of them, who the frick knows, and then he's got a 10 attack. I, I realize the math doesn't add up, but I don't feel like doing it right now. <laughs> Anyways, you know, he's only got a 10 attack on his last click. Yeah, so five clicks of 11. One of them. There you yeah. go. Thank you. Too. The average is like, Perfect. yeah, 11, I guess, but um, it's a high 11 is the average. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty, pretty solid on the attack. So it gives him Blades, Claws, Fangs. When he uses it after resolutions, you may place an adjacent friendly character or a hit opposing character a number of squares away from their current square equal to the D6 re- result. So this is a little risky. Uh, I don't think I would roll it until he gets down to his three damage. So if you start him at 60 and not his highest point line, which is, uh, we, we still don't know if it's 170 or 5 or if it's 125. There's a little bit of a glare. I am hoping 125. I think that's just way better if he's 175. He's a little overcosted yeah. here, but that's um, super overcosting the top end of his dial compared <laughs> oh, to the bottom end. Crazy. Yeah. But once again, we, we've we seen stuff like that. Like Marquee of Death is 200 or 60 points. Yeah. You know? So, like, we've and seen to be, them. To like, be fair, I, I almost expected to be 175 because that yeah. top dial double rollout with Power Cosmic and Mastermind, that's a real hard top yeah. dial to crack. Like, it's not the most crazy one. It's not like he's reducing pen damage, but he does have a 50 50 shape change to go with his impervious True. and Mastermind, and it's all protected out with. So, yeah. So, you know, being able to toss out a friendly character an extra couple of squares is really cool. Um, but I don't I wouldn't risk it top dial for sure. And it, it's very situational if you want to just not be, I guess, based to an opposing character anymore. But then again, like why wouldn't you want to be? He's a very close combat heavy figure. Maybe if you like have some crazy repositioning you can pull off to uh, you know, in a more so other people can see them like other friendly characters but yeah overall i think hulkling should be really fun to play and if you're a fan of hulkling the sculpt is amazing he's got his crazy cool uh whatever sword uh what's it called star sword i guess star sword it's got a crazy yeah it's like it looks cool so he's got like a cape and stuff so yeah hulkling looks pretty sweet man yeah i don't yeah that uh that special attack power is interesting because Let's say like you charge somebody next to a wall and you roll your blades and you roll like a two. You can just place them on the other side of the wall and then like they're no longer. I mean, it's got options. It's interesting. Depending because like Calder said, there's like a glare. It could be 175, could be, I mean, honestly, it could even be like 195. It's hard to really tell. Oh boy. Um, Depending on how high it is, clearly his top dial is way more impressive with that 50-50 shape change, power cosmic, mastermind. But his bottom dial isn't... I mean, his bottom dial's got exploit, so he's got penetrating damage for 60 points, which is also really good. So, hard to say um, if he'll be of use. I, I don't know. I like him. I don't like him too much because he does similar yeah. stuff to other characters we've got. Um, but, uh, onto the last character that we're going to preview today. Uh, and this is rocket raccoon. So giving us the, the follow-up shared trait, the, the new mechanic of follow-up, which actually is pretty interesting and a new team ability. Rocket is going to be an uncommon in the set number zero one nine. He's got his like little white tux on. I don't know exactly what's going on with that storyline, but I don't know. He's cool. He's he looks more like hey, Sly Cooper than Rocket it's Raccoon. He's looking good. Uh, yeah. He's got Guardians of the Galaxy and Animal Keyword, real name Rocket. Uh, the follow-up trait is his only trait, and that is free. So this is going to be a generic kind of thing, but it's going to be specifically for Rocket Raccoon. So replace any mention of Rocket with whatever other character will have this trait and any mention of like his keywords with what their keywords might be, and that'll be the generic version. So uh, once per turn for all characters with a follow-up trait, make an attack using Rocket Raccoon's printed combat values, but only to target a single character hit with an attack made by another friendly character with the Guardians of Galaxy keyword. So this is kind of like the Giganta Wonder Woman thing, where Wonder Woman can hit and the Giganta can retaliate. Um, 
This isn't quite a retaliation, but it's a free attack using printed using printed combat values. Uh, but it doesn't say no powers or anything. So with Rocket here, he's only got energy explosion, but technically you'd be able to do that. So that's, mm. I don't know. I mean, if we get a Star-Lord with this same thing and he's got like pen damage, that could be could be impressive depending on like what the kind of combos you can use with it um and free attacks are always good so it's literally you hit an opposing character and then if rocket here wants to running shot like power action running shot shoot him and then free shoot him again you can do that so i don't know it's a pretty decent trait i feel like it's uh maybe too good i don't know yet though um cool. And then his team ability, Cooper. it's a brand new team ability. It's just called Guardians. So clearly Guardians of the Galaxy. But um, this character's combat values can't be modified by opposing characters' effects, which is just solid. Uh, it's not adding a ton to the character, but it's it's almost like a outsider's almost like weird world. Another big thing about this team ability is it's not uncopyable. So yeah it'll be pretty easy to like slip this onto Spider-Man family teams if you so choose to, I guess. Um, for whatever it's worth, I mean, it's definitely like a decent team ability to have at no additional cost uh, or, you know, no additional effort, I should say, because yeah. technically it's got a cost involved. But uh, his dial is, he's 50 points. He's got two clicks of running shot, full dial of leadership, five clicks long, uh, last three clicks, he's got sidestep, and he's got energy explosion his whole dial. He's got super senses for his first four clicks with one click of regen. He's six range, two lightning bolts. I think it's a good pick and sealed. It's a pretty solid 50-point secondary oh, attacker, yeah. and that follow-up trait is definitely solid. Um, I don't. It'll depend on what else they do with the Guardians of the Galaxy because clearly you need that keyword for his follow-up trait to kick off. But if it's like a solid enough theme, then I can see it like being a pretty decent uh, trait to have. Uh, the trait is awesome. I think follow up is really cool. I hope we see it on more than just Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's not just like how we got Salvage, but it was only on like Star Jammers, you know, right. in this last set. So like, because I think like I get it, pirates whatever salvaged things or whatever their thinking was on that. But I think there's uh, there's definitely plenty of use for like follow up style attacks. Like, you know, characters like Spider-Man or Captain America could definitely use those. I feel like uh, getting those extra hits in. So I really like it. And then, and this guardians TA it's insane. Cause I mean, that's just what Watchmen used to be. And Watchmen was uncopyable and it blows my mind that they would make this copyable. I'm just, could yeah, be that it's like, just dang. wow just uh slip their minds and they'll tra they'll change it but Maybe. yeah uh combat values can't be modified by opposing characters effects so that'd be like pd hydra um perplex straight up perplex yeah yeah I'm, I'm trying to think i mean there's uh, i guess what's the what's the new um masters of evil also wouldn't be able to affect this. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it mostly protects you from other team abilities and then, like, perplex. But there's even some traits that, like, decrease combat values, so... Yeah. So, like, that's just... That's just awesome to me. So I am... I'm really impressed. But, yeah, that is going to be the Empire new Simeon. Does this, uh... Let's make you a little more excited for Empire? I don't know. How are you feeling on the set so far? Now that we get to see a few of the figures. Um... So, not, not really. Um... I ooh, ooh. that's not to say that I'm not excited for the set. I'm already extremely excited. These characters don't really appeal to me that much. Mr. Fantastic is probably the one that I'm most interested in here. Hulkling will be something where if I pull it, I'll keep it. It's really cool, but I'm not going to like reach for it right off the bat. Depending okay. on how many generics we have will be like the real kicker for me because if it's uh, we already know we've got the Scroll Spy, and then because of Hulkling's card, we know number 003 in the set is Kree Soldier. If we get a full set of, like, cosmic generics, like Scroll, Kree, um, I don't know, I can't think of anything else. Just, like, some generic, like, kind of more Scroll stuff and Kree stuff, like General, uh, whatever, Warrior. Oh, sure, yeah. 
if we get a bunch of stuff like that, then I'll be buying heavily into this set to get all those. Um, but just on the surface from right now, I've already been really invested in this set because of one benched powers coming back. That's exciting. Um, well, maybe I don't know if they're all coming back. Well, but yeah. obviously shape changes. At least for shape sure. change. Yeah, we haven't seen yeah. super strength or invincible yet, uh, or pulse wave, but definitely yeah. shape change is back. So there's at least that. I think invincible might not be back yet because I don't know. I guess you know the only two that would have had it would have been Hulkling or Mister Fantastic, but they had impervious. Yeah. Hard to say, but yeah. Uh, the new team ability is really interesting. I think that new uh, mechanic, the follow-up, is going to be probably good. Probably it's really gross. good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There will be like a super rare or a chase that has it that just makes it really busted. Uh, because I believe... Let me double check. Uh, once per turn for all characters with a follow-up trait, make an attack using blah, blah, blah. Only to target a single character hit with an attack made by another friendly character. So yeah, you could just play two rocket raccoons, have one running shot up, attack, and hit. The other one running shot up, attack, and then get a free. So if there is a super rare with this trait because of the way it's worded, you can just run multiples of that character. So you only need one good character with this trait, and multiples of that character can take advantage of it. Um yeah, so I, I assume that'll be a pretty decent trait, at least somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, I, I've i been excited for the set. I really like Super Scrolls. I always thought that was a cool thing. I can't wait to see what the Super Scroll X-Men guy does. Um, that and uh, the crazy-looking Thor chase, what I'm assuming is a chase. I uh, really want to see what that is. Not the biggest fan of symbiote stuff, but... You know, that's fine. We're getting more symbiote stuff, so... It looks cool, though. It does. Like, whether or not you like it, it looks real neat. Well, that black I think goo. I'm still just kind of bummed because when they made Venom Punisher, it was so lackluster that, like... Oh, I was, so bad. I was like, like, ah. He has, like, these big wings, and then they didn't even give him flight. It was like, oh, he's gliding or something. I don't know. Yeah. But still, should have been I mean, should have been way cooler. Like, you should have just been just like Agent Venom was in comics, where he had all the tendrils like holding guns. Like, yeah, you know, like that just makes sense. Like he's Punisher. I don't, I don't really, you know, <laughs> my mind doesn't be like, ah, yes, Punisher. He's the one with wings. You know, classic <laughs> Punisher moment yeah. right there. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'll swoop down and I'll swoop down as if I have a cape and I'll, I'll scare the bad guys. Um, ah yes, because no really no other caped fear. crusader type character swoops down and scares bad guys Gosh. dressed all in black. No one does that. Yeah, some kind of uh, some kind of uh, person that does it at night uh, when it's dark out. Some kind of uh, some kind of dark night, if you would, uh, protector of of the people, punisher of the uh, of the. All right, I don't know where I'm going with that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that's Empire. Yeah, it's like he's guys. Vengeance. If you're excited. Yeah, something about vengeance. I don't know, dude. Uh, if you guys are excited for Empire, you can write into the show. Let us know. Uh, I'm definitely planning on buying quite a, a lot of this set. These previews don't necessarily make me excited for it. I'm excited for more scroll keyword. And it looks like a lot of people are going to have the scroll keyword. So that's going to be cool. But uh, besides that, uh, this does not change what I'm going to buy so far anyways. Uh, all right. This past weekend, uh, there was a 300 Modern Age tournament, The Battle for Master Mold uh, here in South Dakota. Uh, go over a little bit of what I played. I uh, I played a good stuff is good team. Uh, I, I literally, after losing to it in Florida, once I made uh, top 16, I l played against uh, Joe uh, Josafa Alves, I believe. Alves. I, I feel a little bad if I got that wrong. I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, really awesome guy. Super friendly. Really cool to talk with. We had a good time down in Florida. But I really dug the team that he was playing. I changed it up. Not a crazy amount. Just a little bit. Uh, just to Because I knew there were some things I'd probably have to worry about in like my area. It sort of goes back to... Um, like, oh, do you think someone is... I was talking with listener, you know, Matt Reed, who was on the show last week, and he was like, well, don't you think your team... Aren't you going to be worried about, like, maggots or something? 
Uh, and I was oh, like, yeah. honestly, I don't, I don't think anyone in my area has maggots. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone would play that, and nobody did. So it's sort of one of those like meta game like things where it's yeah. like, know your, yeah, know your uh, yeah. local meta for yeah. sure. So uh, the team was Jason Wingard, uh, the Flash at thirty and then twenty points, Guy Gar- Sky Tyrant at fifty. Mr. Oz, and then the last 25 had Marvella, and then the Power Gem, and the Emotional Modifier. It's non-theme, it's just a bunch of stuff that can go real far and then make attacks. So, with if the Flash TKs somebody, he places two squares, then Oz's thing triggers, they place two squares. So my TK range is 10 squares uh, when I TK with the Flash, or yeah, 8 squares if I TK with Oz. And then my charge range with Sky Tyrant is going to be 11 squares, right, without using any perplexes or anything. And if I want to perplex, I do have to call in a pog with Jason. But anyways, so that means I start in the second square, I go out to the 12th square, and then I can charge to the uh, 23rd square. uh, And that, that leaves only one square left for me to be adjacent to, which is, of course, the back row. So, like, I can get to your back row uh, just right away with... Oz, Sky Tyrant, and Flash. So that makes it super easy. I give Sky Tyrant the power gem nine times out of ten, just so that way he's going to be a 12 for five when he flurries. Um, And a lot of the time, I would go against people that would share a keyword with me, whether or not they had a Sky Tyrant on their team, or maybe like Warrior. I played against a team that was like a lot of Spider-Man characters, and then a few Wonder Woman characters mixed in with, uh, what's it called? Um, The Spider-Viking. So they all had Warrior, you know, or most of them had Warrior. Yeah. Um, So, like, that made that a little easier. Um, And then the emotional modifier is on the team because local uh, Kevin Nelson likes to play double null, and that's hard to beat if he's making shape changes. (laughs) Yeah. It's really hard to beat. Um... And it's, I felt a little bad because I forgot to ask uh, somebody else to borrow their emotional modifier. So the same day of the tournament, or it was the night before, I can't remember what it was, but I, I asked Kevin if I could borrow his emotional modifier. And he knew darn well that the only reason I wanted it was to specifically <laughs> counter his team yeah. and bless him. He still gave it to me. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, emotional modifier. Um And yeah, you know, Jason, obviously, he can move up, sidestep, drop off a pog, and the pog can running shot, charge, whatever I had. Obviously, Commissioner uh, Lex Luth, Red Sun Lex on the sideline. We had Captain Marvel on the sideline, uh, Isaac, all that stuff. Guy Gardner, uh, that was the biggest thing. When I saw, like, that Joe was playing Guy Gardner, and I'm like, oh, Guy is my man. I love Guy Gardner. He's, like, my favorite DC character. Are you kidding me? Like, like, I knew he was good, but I would have never thought about putting him on a team, like, competitively, um, mostly because I was too I was looking at his keywords. And Joe was like, big brain time. Who cares about keywords, man? You don't need that garbage, uh, which is so true. Uh, number one, I, I think playing non-theme nowadays uh, doesn't hurt you at all. Um, this team's got two probs. It's got a 12-square C whatever prob, and it's got an okay-ish prob with TK Flash, you know. So I didn't feel too bad about that. The only time I don't like it is when I really do that full send Sky Tyrant. I'm banking a lot on a 12 attack on a yeah, flurry. It's not a That's lot. That's the only thing I really don't, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it can be a little scary against some teams, especially since he does... Uh, doesn't have battle fear. He doesn't have precision strike. He doesn't have exploits. So like if they have rollouts, like that can be a problem. Uh, but normally they'll have a phoenix or something that can die in five damage. You know uh, that he'll be at least they'll have to put in a little bit of work. So anyways, uh, we did four rounds. Cut to top eight. Even though we had thirteen people show up, just kind of the way the day ended up means we had to cut to top eight with the way losses and wins went up i don't remember what it was but uh first round i play against jonah fleming local of the show supporter a local of rainbow supporter of the show so that was cool he was playing a latveria team that had batman the mic drop batman with the what's her face amanda waller which gives batman the future keyword which let him be on a latveria theme team he had sky tyrant molecule man obviously annihilating conqueror uh, all that stuff. Now, this game was crazy close. Um, I ended up winning the game with 175 points, and he lost the game with 165 points. 
that's how close this game was. Uh, in my initial throwing Sky Tyrant up, uh, Jonah used his whatever, uh, Mal- his Oz prob, and then he used all three of his Steam probs, and it made Sky Tyrant miss both attacks, Dang. which was just like, oof. Playing a Sky Tyrant down really sucks. Let me tell you something, guys. It really sucks. Um, so then after beating Jonah, I uh, played against this guy named Nick. Uh, Nick was playing a Spider-Man family. This was the the warrior, Spider-Viking, Wonder Woman, uh, Donna Troy had on the team. Um, and that was tough to beat. So Because Donna Troy has protected Outwit on senses when she has the bracelets. And then he also had the PS4 Spider-Man copying Wonder Woman. And that has protected Outwit. So I literally had to wait for him to roll a one or two before I could even try to kill PS4 Spidey. I, I, I would do all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, the rest of the team, yeah, they also kind of had super senses. He had some, uh, I almost called them sidekicks, secret identity figures, Gwen Stacy, um, Peter Parker, uh, Eddie Brock, all that. It's so, like those were also a little bit of a pain to chew through. Uh, but overall, you know, still good games. It was it was tough to finally get rid of the uh, PS4. I didn't kill PS4 Spidey in the first game. I only... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't kill him. Like he was just like almost just impossible to hit. I had no precision strike on the team, so like that was rough. Um, but yeah. Anyways, next game played against Ian Eggleston, a uh, friend of the show. Does a lot of. We've been working on some some projects with Ian. It's been on a few episodes. Uh, playing a team very similar to mine, instead of Guy Gardner and some other point shenanigans he had the two flashes he had sky tyrant he had molecule man he had oz and then he had dark britain and jason i think was his full team i might be missing one or two things but that's so, what he had yeah he had jason double flash yeah you didn't have a molecule man but he had, i did not know uh sky tyrant marvella mr oz so yeah his two differences were molecule man and dark britain and then he had a reality gem instead of yeah there it is reality your equipment but yeah so obviously similar. we had two very very similar teams um and, and Ian's a good player i lost to him in top 8 last year i think it i think it was still the top 8 i don't think i got to top 4 in the south dakota states um that was a crazy game back when i was playing super scrolls and stuff um but yeah so before the the game started, he was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "Really, Dark Britain? Like, why are you playing him?" And it was like, "Oh, dude, he's so good. He hasn't died all day." So you know, when it, when I hear that, I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> he's dying now." <laughs> you know, it's like, like, "Oh, I don't mind if I do target him first. <laughs> exactly. Um, so he won map. You know, it was uh, whatever. I think I only won map once that entire day. Uh, but that's what I that's what I get for this team. Understandable, you know. So, yeah, so uh, he sends his Sky Tyrant my way. Sky Tyrant, uh, the way I positioned on my turn, he wasn't going to be able to target anybody that shared a keyword with him. And he had to use his perplexes into Sky Tyrant speed. So Sky Tyrant was an 11, swinging on 18s, I believe. I don't think he could get Marvella. Yeah, he's swinging on 18s. So I use, he's got no prob. I've got one prob on it whiffs both to t- both attacks just like i did in my game against jonah with my sky tyrant and i'm like ah oof uh so then i think i just use like flash to get rid of this sky tyrant i tk up mine handles you know do some things m- slaughter absolutely slaughter that uh that king britain and then his tk flash with my sky tyrant uh and then it sort of became a weird game after my sky tyrant died um he threw out a rookie pog i threw out my rookie pog there was some mind control some weird wonky mind control chains with jason but it was a pretty good game uh we were playing on doom's castle map and like he's like yeah i haven't played on this all day so i'm gonna choose it and as soon as we set up our teams we were just like man why did you choose this map dude this is horrible for us like the tk line is so bad like uh doom's castle is not it's not good so if you if you play against a team like this Put them on something weird where it's got a ledge like that, like Doom's Castle, and make them have to like destroy blocking to get like a good line of fire to TK people out and all this. Yeah, it's so annoying, so bad. Um, but yeah, so I was able to win that game as well. I guess I don't think my Sky Tyrant actually died. I think because he mind controlled my Sky Tyrant, 
Uh, no, yeah, this is what happened. My Sky Tyrant got six resurrection tokens that game. It was pretty awesome. I, uh, big fan. Big fan. It was hilarious. Uh, and then my last game um, was against, I think, Parker uh, in top four. And then he had, like, Onslaught. He had Jean Grey equipped with Galactus. And then he had Micron, who he was giving the illusion generator, modif- the Mysterio equipment to. Um, what else? I think that might have just been it. 200, that's 40, 265. No, he had to have something else on the team. I don't know what else was on the team. But um, that was that was pretty much his whole team. And that was a whole, you know, a more standard gameplay. Equip the modifier, get rid of, you know, on try to get rid of Onslaught as soon as I could. Wasn't able to sink the second Sky Tyrant attack because he made super senses. So I was like, all right, whatever, charge away. Um, he got quite a few good mind controls in with Jean Grey. He was able to kill Guy Gardner. Um, yeah, and then eventually I had to, like, kind of sacrifice a Flash uh, in order to hit her to stop you know, and then kill her with somebody else in that turn. So I had to sacrifice Flash, but in that, in doing so, it killed Flash, it killed uh, my Marvella, it killed one of my Pogs, and it dealt Jason three damage. And I was like, ah, such a bad trade. But I was like, had to get rid of her. Um, didn't have a Dark Phoenix on the sideline. Definitely, uh, all I would have said is like, definitely trying to like, like, he wasn't able to use it, but still, like, definitely try to borrow that. Like, most of my team was borrowed, so never feel, like, a burden or anything if you want to borrow something. Def- totally just ask. Uh, but, yeah, that was my uh, top. Going into the top eight, uh, undefeated. Feels good, man. Uh, first game, uh, I go against Nick, who ran the Spider-Man family team again. It was not totally second verse, same as the first. I was actually able to kill the, what's it called? Uh ps4 spidey this time so like that was nice and then my top four game against kevin is on the youtube channel uh and you guys can see how that played out basically no misses shape change and it's like yep here we are type of deal uh he won map which was good so that way he could you know steal the modifier right away uh but just missing shape change is just yeah you know Plus that that obscuring terrain uh yeah it is helpful with, yeah well, it, can are we allowed to call it obscuring anymore since it's no longer? Uh, it's uh, all just considered hindering. Yeah, Same thing but, with Null. Uh, I guess it's all just hindering. I guess prior to the rules change, now there's probably way more maps that Null works with, but that WWE arena is just like a ton of uh, free movement for Null. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Um, And then, yeah, and then after that, I had a uh, my top two. End game was against Jonah again, which was my toughest game of the day. Uh, it was actually Jonah playing against Ian, and I was like, I was surprised uh, how their game went. I was watching the back and forth, and it was pretty, pretty crazy game. So Jonah instead of this time, he chose Doom, chose all caps Doom, which was way worse than uh, Sorcerer Supreme Doom for my team. Cutting down on my actions really sucked. That means I don't get my double equip off right away. Um, yeah, just all caps doom really sucks. I, it took a really long time to get to where sky tyrant can make an attack with Jonah having barrier and the smoke cloud from molecule man and not moving up super fast. You know, it was definitely where it's like, I realized I'm going to have to play as forward as I can in this game. Uh, and I still screwed up. I, I always forget that you can TK somebody. And then if there's somebody else who can TK them, you can also TK them. It's, that the person you TK'd can't use TK. Um, and I always screw up that ruling so much in my my brain. So there came a time where I was like, ah, Sky Tyrant needs just two more squares to where, because he had some really good um, smoke cloud rolls. So I would have had to take a long way around to get into his team where I could have had this golden quake. And I have the game recorded, so you guys will be able to watch it. Uh, and just this awesome like quake off where I can get Dark Phoenix, I can get Sky Tyrant, I can get Molecule Man, I can get Batman, I can get uh, Doom all caps. You know, I was just like, oh my gosh, I can get an amazing quake off. And obviously, if I could have done that with Guy Gardner, I would have. Um, that Sky Tyrant is the only one that could have even had the speed. And I, it didn't even register in my mind that I could have sidestepped a Jason, dropped a uh, Chaos Pog, and then TK'd with Flash, TK'd with Chaos, and then got uh got guy gardner there 
be, or not got Yerner, but got uh, whatever Sky Tyrant across the board. That was that was definitely a failing that I that I had. I couldn't think of. Um, yeah, it was rough. It was really rough. So, but I still ended up winning that game on time. It was he had Sky Tyrant and Oz left, and I had Jason and Oz left. Uh, at that point in time, I had equipped the emotional modifier to Jason. I was giving Sky Tyrant negative one attack values, and Sky Tyrant had whatever had hit 18s and his Oz couldn't see him. He was outwitting my Oz prob and he just could never hit Oz or Jason in the, and like he, he only swung on him once. And then I was like, well, I guess Jason's going to do the slowest thing ever, but try to hit sky tyrant. You know, we killed him once. We had to kill him like two more times. So, uh, yeah, I, that game ended up just being crazy close. If he couldn't hit the nines, he just wasn't going to hit. And then I also had senses rolls on both Oz and Jason, of course. So, that was just a crazy, like, tough and, like, long game. Like, I really don't like barrier games like that, you know? I hate Molecule Man for yeah. all those reasons. It's just painful to play That's why against. why this new read's going to be amazing. You just, yeah, you TK him out, you sidestep, you move his full nine, and boom, barrier's all gone. Uh, yeah. No, I preemptively try and build with Molecule Man, so if my opponent has one, I can use mine to get rid of, like, I can do right. the roll to get rid of their barrier. Their All you need is, like, a two at most, usually, to get rid of at least a direct line, because, yeah, mm-hmm. um, when you're pumping out, what is it he can do, like, potentially ten? Is that right? Because yeah, he's got normal 10. barrier and then smoke cloud. He did roll a six one time, and I was like, this is, I'm in pain. Yeah. It sucks. It's a lot. It's yeah. it's a lot of barrier. And on the right map, you don't um, even need that yeah. much. Uh, this this tournament made me into a big emotional modifier stand. I will say that. So against Batman, right away, I just said everybody on my team is Battle Fury, so he couldn't mind control Ooh, or give or us impact. action tokens with yeah. incapacitate, which right. was great. Um, so like, that was awesome. You know, and then later on, if it ever changes, I can give them negative one defense when I need to make attacks or, you know, obviously getting rid of shape change again with Battle Fury or giving them negative one attacks Uh, like that was just so, so helpful. So I, uh, you know, I sold my Psycho Man and my emotional modifier. I think I'm gonna have to buy another one uh, because number one, Psycho Man. Okay, dope. I picked up like duplicates of equipment from that. Not on purpose, just because my polls were very duplicate in that set beautiful beautiful um but yeah and end story i went home with a master mold and a 25 dollar rainbow comics and collectibles gift card and i was i was pretty stoked i'm not gonna lie i uh i instantly then uh drove back home and had a steak dinner that's how i was feeling that day i was feeling pretty good i was like (laughs) oh yeah this is it baby so it was a good weekend we got you know didn't win any tag team titles or anything but we still uh still had a good tag match and then you know, won myself a master mold. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a ribeye tonight. So yeah, it was pretty mm-hmm. awesome. I did yep. New York strips this uh, weekend because they I were nice. on sale for like seven bucks, which for twelve ounce, uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's always good to have a steak night. Uh, no, I, I didn't participate in the tournament. I had some uh, last minute guests, so had to deal with that. Uh, but I did have a, a good casual 300 weekend, uh, or not weekend, that was on Thursday, but a good casual 300 with uh, pseudo-sealed kind of stuff. Um, ton of people pulling Blackheart in my area. I don't know how common he is, but I'm getting uh, plenty of practice against him, and I'm Oof. guessing that I'll need it because, man... Even like in the hands of like a casual, you can you can see just how, and I'm not saying that like disparagingly, disparagingly, uh, but even like in the hands of someone not trying to break Blackheart, you can see that he's kind of hard to put down. And uh, if you combo him with something like Kate Pride, suddenly he's got Steel Energy and two stop clicks and Mystics the whole time and Mastermind and yikes! There's just too many ways for him to heal too much goodness going on i think it's going to be it's going to be a, a very interesting shift in meta once uh rise and fall is legal i think it will be here soon it's a week after release is that right 
Yeah, it's going to be a week after release. So next uh, Wednesday. When we're listening to this, this Wednesday. As yeah, this Sunday. The, the so Wednesday, the... if you listen to us on time. Uh, in yes. retrospect, <laughs> Rise and Fall is probably, you know, who knows? Uh, hopefully the last set that came out with benched powers. Um, but yeah, uh, no, I'm I'm excited to play with Rise and Fall. I got rid of most of my Wonder Woman stuff uh, just because I wasn't expecting to play very often. And then venues started opening up and now I, I don't really want to buy back into Wonder Woman, what I already sold. So I'm trying to look to the future. Um, but yeah, with that... That full map reach, I feel like flashes are going to be here to stay. I feel like, oh yeah, that is a a real hard thing to get around. Um, not necessarily even like the just the TK one, but that that double uh, charge one as well. Um, it's, it's a lot to get past. And then of course Sky Tyrant, who could have who could have foreseen that Sky Tyrant would still be making waves. Uh, that quick quake ever, yeah. exploit, whatever else you can do. Yeah, it's that a, flurry quick exploit is like kind of good. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, who would have who would have thunk that uh, new power combos with a character that is impossible to kill if he keeps KOing stuff? Um, no, I I like it. I dig it. Um, I might have to borrow some pieces to play something similar at some point, but Ooh. I'm hoping that Hellfire Club takes off enough that I, I don't have to even bother. Although, here's um, the worst part. I never ended up getting a commissioner, and so if I do Hellfire Club with Jason, I don't have access to the rookie without commissioner, and that's probably no, it just Ooh. it just straight up is the best uh, bystander as far as, like, yeah. aggro goes. Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. Like, just rookie... Rookie's insane. I mean, stealth, PD... Running shot, pen blast, impervious, three damage, eleven attack, two bolts, seven range, giant. You know, reroll. Yeah. Got good willpower. The giant like willpower. Oh, yeah, like it's so good. You know, because you can't. You do? Yeah, you just Call straight up can't ignore act. him. He no, can shoot you. out of adjacency, so you can't base yep. him. Uh, and if yeah, if you let him go two turns in a row, he's probably going to make a willpower roll at some point and just yeah. going to keep going. So, yeah. What a he's also like what an amazing zero counter, point like, piece. Uh, oh, it's just, yeah, one of the best. Yeah. Uh but no. Uh I'm super excited for I know Omaha's got a master mold event coming up. Um we're waiting on a few more details about that, but I'm super excited to get into some competitive play again. Oh, yeah. Um more so just like multiple games in a day because here lately it's been like two to three games on a thursday only so it'll be nice to have a weekend back where especially one like where i can crush four or five kevin games. nelson and jonah Ooh. oh man Ooh. it's been a while since Whoa. i've done that if i recall i think kevin normally beats you in top eight but okay yeah oh okay. i mean and in swiss so oh, and it's oof da. ouch <laughs> Ouch! Yeah, and Kevin counter builds to the, to the Bruce dynasty here. Oh uh, man! Yeah, you gotta come sure. into my state, into my venue. Uh yes, yes I am. I hear, especially like the weird uh, sealed pseudo constructed master mold that I enjoy. So that's gonna be fun. I think I think it's gonna be wacky to see how that one goes. But yeah, I'm I'm pumped. And Rainbow's gonna have another master mold here too. That's also gonna be sealed. So that should be a ton of fun. That's not gonna be middle of i think it's gonna be some middle of september sometime but it's gonna be cool anyways moving on with the show we got a couple of questions on our discord there are dozens of us dozens uh all right so izone bill says what are your three favorite comic book runs for himself it would be chris claremont on the x-men stan lee on fantastic four and Geoff Jones on, or Jeff Jones, I don't know, I don't know how to say his name, uh, on Green Lantern. So, so you want to just, you say a run, I say a run, Simeon? Sure. Um, I hate to do, like, just obvious ones, but uh, Neil Gaiman's Sandman, like, that entire, you know, Nocturnes, and, I mean, the entire run, uh, his entire, like, storyline is just excellent, and it's I don't even kind of consider it comic because it's 
it i mean it is but it's it's not like superheroes and tights kind of comics it's just like really good storytelling yeah a little, little bit of sandman stuff well i've got some superheroes and tights here so my this has got to be one of my all-time favorite captain america runs ever but it's the mark grunewald uh captain america run so this was i'm thinking it's like issue uh, 270 or to like 400 something so it's like it's this crazy long run of captain america it's what i like to call the hotline cap run but in this run it introduced a ton of characters yeah, that was like we got more about the servant society and rachel layton diamondback this was the run that introduced us uh, cap wolf uh u.s agents you know uh battle star nomad was introduced in this cap run it's uh madcap for all those madcap fans out there it also had some just some of the best like stories in it in my opinion like i still enjoy like the goofy fun that is the cap wolf story the fun that is superior strategium all of the u.s agents uh as captain america or when he's just the captain is interesting all the ultimatum stories are great like I this has got to be my all time favorite run of Captain America ever made, and and so much so that I collect a lot of Captain America comics. But this is definitely the ones that I do my best to try to get every single issue of this run, just because it was it was absolutely amazing. So Mark Grunewald on Captain America, that's got to be one of my definitely top three. So next one, Simi. Nice. Uh, so to get into that more superhero kind of stuff. Um, Warren Ellis's run on Moon Knight, uh, which was, I believe it was like a revitalization kind of like they, so they restarted it with, uh, like issue one. Cause of course Moon Knight's been around for a little bit longer than when Warren Ellis started on it. But, um, he did like a bunch of very like little dialogue, lots of, uh, the art of course was like really good, but it was very little dialogue just crazy good storytelling with uh imagery and different stuff like that and then you know the the scene the daredevil like one shot where he's fighting like all the dudes in like the hallway from the netflix series uh yes yeah the continuous yeah man that's awesome yeah i don't i don't know how to yeah. say it, but um there's just a bunch of like comic versions of that where he's like essentially like walking through like these like slums and just like beating the heck out of a ton of people and stuff. Uh, it's just a really good, really fun short series. Um, after Warren Ellis gets off of it, it's, it loses a little bit of its luster in my opinion. Um, but yeah, like that's, I think that's where we get like the, the quote where someone says something along the lines of like, why do you wear white? Or, like, why do you wear the white suit or whatever? Uh, like, isn't it, like, easy for them to see you coming? And he's like, I want to see them come. Like, I want them to see me coming or whatever. Like, his, because he's, uh, I don't know. He's crazy Batman is what he is. Uh, but, yeah. No, I, I really liked that run. I think the art's just really inspired in it. And it's, like, simple storytelling. It's not, like, some giant uh world ending kind of thing it's just moon knight versus generic bad dudes mm, okay uh next up i have the uh rick remender remender i don't know how to say his name i always call uh, run remender, on but i i don't know remender okay i have no uh idea. believe it or not i want to talk about his run on that's right you guessed it captain america <laughs> uh so this was his dimension x run which kind of uh, I think it was like 2014, 2013, he took, uh, did this run. Now, it was a little rough early on because the artist uh, was a certain uh, J.R. Jr. Uh, person who some people don't like his art. I'm some people. Um, it's just real rough. Uh, I don't know why I'm say not saying his name. He's not going to listen to this. John Romita Jr., bad artist, in my opinion. Don't like his style. Looks weird and flat and just strange um yeah not a big john Romita jr guy i think it works for some books like uh kick ass like sure um but seeing captain america in that style is so wacky uh at the same time it did uh set the tone for this run really well so 
early on we have the Captain America being sent to Dimension X. So this is some weird Arnim Zola mutant creatures dimension thing. Uh, once he finally gets free from that, um, he of course saves Arnim Zola's daughter and then Arnim Zola's son, who more becomes his son in the thing. Well, kind of like he raises him more so than Arnim Zola does. It's a kind of a weird run. Um, but anyways. Uh, like so like those people that's the nomad and the what's her name like blackwing or something that we get in the nick fury agents of shield set so those characters um nomad had the spiky caps oh her name's jet black that's what it was uh anyways and then obviously then this run goes into the iron nail who's one of like the coolest villains like ever yeah. this dude just shoots like tendrils little spikes tendrils out of his chest and he looks so dope uh, we also get a great uh, one of my one of two favorite issue... uh, hero clicks, like from comic to hero clicks adaptations. Oh, yeah. Though he didn't like his figure or what? Yeah, I just I after reading the comic, I really thought the figure was going to be way better. Oh, better? Yeah, just... I mean, it's definitely not. I mean, I love like the sculpt is perfect, but you're you're so right. The figure first it was like it was like 150 something points too. Like it needed to be way. Well, yeah, it's 155 points, and this is very basic charge, exploit, two range, steel energy like figure, which is you're like, man, he should be, he should do something way cooler. It's he's kind of got the Omega Red thing where it's like, oh, yeah, you can charge exploit, and here's some steel energy, and it's like, yeah, but I'm more than that, bro. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, anyways, so then there's a really good mini storyline about Nuke, and like this was actually a really good end for Nuke's character. Uh, for this run and then of course the run ends with cap losing against iron nail steve losing against iron nail and then uh sam wilson becoming captain america so like such a crazy good like 25 issue uh run that i always really enjoy so yeah nice yeah remender or however you say his name also yeah. did one of like the best runs for x-force in my opinion um yeah pretty good artist or writer whatever um so that yeah that x-force series actually could be my my third one but uh i actually there's a wolverine series that is not like highly rated i wouldn't say uh so it was early 2000s like 2003 i think from uh by greg rucka and again you might like notice a trend um not really a superhero story it's a it's like a, uh, I guess, human story, you would call it. Um, so it just starts off like Wolverine's just kind of on his own, living in this like apartment, just going about his like daily life, kind of ignoring everyone around him, doing his best to like keep to himself. And then like one of his neighbors starts getting beat up and he like steps in. Um, kind of like that dirty laundry short for the Punisher, where it's just like, you know, he finally like has enough of like the local like gang or whatever and steps in to stop it. And then uh, it's called the series is called like brotherhood. So, um, it's like this biker gang goes at odds with Wolverine and it's just like a very street level, um, kind of story, I guess. And it's, it's mostly just like a revenge thing. And then it goes into, uh, the coyote crossing storyline, which is where it starts getting worse. But yeah, the art's really good. Um, you might have seen the cover from issue two. That's where Wolverine's like sitting in a hallway and there's a trail of like bullet holes that go from like the wall down across his chest down to like the floor. Uh, it's one of like my okay. favorite covers. Uh, and so like the art's just really good. The story is, it's very well written. It's not, you know, it's no Magneto's trying to destroy the world kind of story, but uh, it's very well written and I just I really like like the human aspects of like writing sometimes like when artists like try and like actually give characters motivations beyond just like I good you bad me punch you now that kind of thing you know Yeah you need a little bit more like to me the best villains are always the ones where it's like you can see their side of the story more and that's what makes like a villain like way more interesting not so much like I'm bad I'm going to hit you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally evil for it. the sake of being evil. <laughs> being evil. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, yikes. So. 
Uh, now, my last run here, it's by uh, Mark Wade. But Mark Wade's in a few runs on this character. So this is specifically the one from 2017, 2018. Uh, Mark Wade, Chris Samney, and uh, Matthew Wilson worked on the book. Uh, this is, of course, yeah, you guessed it, uh, Captain America. So this is a really, really short run um, on Cap. But what made it so impactful and so good is that it was the Captain America run uh, post Secret Empire, instantly following Secret Empire. Secret Empire, of course, absolutely butchered Captain America's character uh, for the sake of being, oh, wow, I bet you didn't see that one coming. And it's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. Shut up. Um, so Secret Empire was pain, just pure pain, disgusting in comic book uh, event. Um, and this run really took it back to Captain America traveling the country taking it easy he was uh you know he's still obviously you know kind of just wherever cap kind of goes trouble follows it seems like that's just the way it is being a superhero and everything so he stops like uh like the swordsman comes back for an issue which is kind of interesting and then there's a few other like minor ish villains that cap has to handle when he's traveling through america but it's this really cool captain america trying to clear his head like you know they saw captain america murder people on tv so it's this whole trying to work through uh, a country's distrust in somebody who became supreme leader of hydra and like took over america and like that wasn't steve i mean it was but it wasn't you know so it was a really good run now later in the run they do some weird like future shenanigans which i wasn't a big fan of but for the pure and it's probably only like six or seven issues um yeah, this run was was really, really short. It was a really refreshing and needed run on Captain America. And it was sad that it was so short because the current Cap run sucks. Uh, the one had awesome artwork, it had Alex Ross artwork, but it's absolutely garbage Captain America run with the Power Elite and whatever. And then I guess really the new current Captain America run, the United States of Captain America, is the opposite of this book where Cap just once again gets slightly disillusioned with the American dream. And it's... Um, Obviously, I assume the run's going to end with him being like, oh, yeah, the American dream is well and fine or like whatever. But it's like, bro, cringe. Quit doing this stuff. Quit, quit being lame with Captain America. Um, but yeah, this is my all time favorite. And this isn't my all time favorite, but this is once again, just another really good Captain America run. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think it's everything, right? Yeah, you started. So like sorry guys that these are all captain america runs but i really i genuinely do not read any other comic book uh i i do not care about almost any other character or team of characters like besides captain america like i read events and i'll read like some avengers books and i've got like a bunch of like war of light books i don't know if there's like necessarily a quote-unquote like run of war of light or whatever but i always enjoy those um but these ones just you know yeah. i'm biased if you don't know by now I'm fairly biased. <laughs> when, it, <laughs> so. when it comes to comics, um, you'd have to be more specific as to like get like better answers from me because uh, my favorites, like it's hard to pick favorites in anything, especially if it's something that you care a lot about. But like I have like my favorite, my favorite like beginner comics, my favorite comics for people who aren't uh, oh, yeah, normal totally. comic book fans, like people who aren't into superheroes. I've got a whole list of my favorite comics like that I would uh, refer those people to, um, like, then again, like my favorite non-superhero comics, my favorite superhero comics, my favorite, like what I would call like intermediate and advanced comics. Like you have to be, you have to be this informed to really appreciate these comics. Oh like those, yeah. Those wow. ones. Uh, but clearly like I, I don't, those aren't my actual favorites. Those are just, you know, favorites for like yeah. my, my sub that I've made of, comics i don't know my own genres that i've made in my brain get a load of this guy all right, yeah. right on. uh our last discord question is going to be from uh, of course <laughs> super fan chance mccall here which is why does donny pepper cricket have more likes than dial h ouch why, <laughs> why? no uh, um i think donny yeah. pepper cricket uh has been around i think he does that thing quite where he buys likes Oh, oh no, that you're going to actually yeah, do a yeah. legitimate thing. Okay. You were like, yeah, he's just been around long. Nah, I'm going to say Donnie Pepper Creek buys likes. That's the only possible way that amateur pro wrestler 
I will say he has his own plushie and toy. And while I don't know if that's like a permanent merch or if he just did like a one off thing, because I imagine it costs quite a bit to do like a a larger run of like plushies and stuff. Um, Yeah, we don't have that yet. So we'll, we'll have to step up our merch game to beat out old Pepper Cricket. Yeah, hey, if you guys want some Rowdy Ranch Hand plushies, some Billion Clicks Bruce plushies, let us know right into the show. If we can get this, is, this could be like a Has Lab. Like, if we can get Ooh. 20 backers, or yeah, and what the, would the be Billion Clicks right Bruce pl- plushie, the head will yeah. twist off or like the hat will pop off, and it's a Why? koozie that you can slide what? your natty ice into. Goodness lord, okay, of course, of course, <laughs> only you would think of something like that, Simeon. Oh my gosh. These dude, yeah. <sighs> this dude, <laughs> this dude. Next listener question here on the Discord is going to be from Luke. 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 Uh, we are each given one of the Rise and Fall Super Rare Primes. He's going to give Simeon Mimic, uh, and then I'm going to get the Emperor Gladiator. And he's asking us to uh, use a team uh, or build a team using these primes. 300 modern or otherwise. I think I went 300 modern. Simeon, you go 300 modern as well. Yeah. yeah. Right, so if I'm going to okay. if I'm going to build with a hundred dollar figure, I'm going to make it competitive because. Casual call. would be kind of That's mean to build with it, to be honest. Also, it's just real easy to build casually. You just match a keyword or something. Um, I'll go first. I think my build will be slightly less impressive or less practical than Calder's because I think Mimic is a harder figure to really make work. Emperor Gladiator's just got a lot going for him. So Mimic, if you don't know, has the absorbing powers all around me trait. He can use displayed standard attack and damage powers of adjacent characters. Um, Doesn't have to be friendly, can be opposing, so that's great. Uh, I'm playing him at the 60-point line instead of the 150, and that's because you just get way more mileage at the lower point line while only losing a little bit of a stat bump. So I'm essentially saving 90 points, and my attack is just going down by one or something like that. Um, He starts with the flying, hacking, slashing speed power, That is charge, flurry, and plasticity, which is great because that'll the plasticity will keep your opponents from breaking away, and you'll be able to take whatever powers they have, which is awesome. Um, Then charge and flurry means that you're going to be able to deal a ton of damage when you do close the gap. He's got eight range, psychic blast, and exploit weakness. So no matter where or how he's attacking, uh, he's doing pen damage top dial. And we're going to try and keep him top dial. He doesn't get too bad lower on because he does switch from exploit to close combat expert. So on click, on his third click in on a 60 point line, he's a 12 for four. Um, but the big thing that we're going to try and build around is his rally die. And that's the red rally five. Uh, and that is, you can remove one of his rally dies and choose a displayed standard power a friendly character within range can use. Mimic can use the chosen power this game. And there is no, uh, like, that's the end of it. So you can use this rally as many times as you want throughout the game and stack as many powers. Theoretically, Mimic could have access to every power in the game, including WWE powers if you built with WWE, which I did not, but theoretically. Um, In order to get that to really kick off, because Mimic also gets powers from people that he's adjacent to, but... Uh, something like a mind control or knockback could really ruin positioning from that. So you are going to want to boost Mimic's defense right off the bat. So we've got Moira is going to be the second character. So I've got Mimic at 60, Moira McTaggart at 20. Uh, She has the power, give an adjacent friendly character with the X-Men keyword a rally die. So she's going to do that immediately for Mimic as soon as the game starts, or as soon as the turn starts. Mimic will then cash that rally die in and free pick a character's or pick a power from a friendly character within range. And we've got the 40 point Krakoa who makes the Krakoa portals. Um, he starts off with eight range triple lightning bolts in cap, 13 speed with stealth, at 18 defense with invincible, and support with one damage. So Mimic is going to pick the Invincible off that dial so he can reduce penetrating damage. And then 
that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's what uh, that's what Mimic's gonna do. This is gonna be turn one. Pretty simple stuff. From there, uh, we're just gonna do a basic X Men build. So we're gonna do a Dark Phoenix for thirty points as a retaliator. We're gonna do a Jubilee for fifty points, who can potentially, if we win map, she can switch to the Shogo mode, which is an alternative version of Mimic, can then pick like shape change off of Jubilee. Um, and then we are going to do a maggot who will give, uh, mimic the ability to pick prob and sidestep, which, so we're essentially, we're just kind of biding our time, having mimic pick as many powers as possible. Every turn where, uh, Moira is able to be given a power action. We're going to do that to give mimic a die. Mimic is going to carry Moira around as long as possible to do this. And then to, really amp things up. We're going to add the the Professor X that allows us to switch X-Men out. So we're going to be able to switch Jubilee out if need be. We'll definitely switch the Professor X out. So this will give us access if we want Krakoa, if we end up on a map where Jubilee can switch to sh the Shogo transformation, we can drop Krakoa because really the only reason we're leaving him on there is for the Invincible. Um, but we can drop Krakoa, we can drop Professor X, that'll give us 65 points, we can drop another Dark Phoenix and another support piece, or pretty much whatever, X-Men has uh, everything at its disposal. Um, and then, last figure on the team, uh, on the main force, we're going to do Maggot, because uh, if you've paid attention, oh, I already said Maggot, uh, if you've paid attention, the main reason you're well, using the maggot. Was paying <laughs> yeah the main <laughs> reason we're using maggot is uh mimic would be able to go quite a distance with him or he can use krakoa's portals depending on which map we end up on and like what characters we keep and maggots uh bystanders don't trigger uh colossal retaliation and yet they pump out quite a bit of damage so we've got all of that we can also swap in a Krakoan Revival character if need be. And then the last things on the team is going to be a Galactus Herald dial for Mimic so that he can't be outwitted because our goal is to make him pretty much unkillable. We want to give him two rollouts and invincible. So if he does take damage, he's at least reducing the pen damage. Um, he does have the X-Men team ability so he can heal up with other characters from that. And then, last but not least, we're going to throw the power gem on him. So, um, he'll be a 12 for 5 top dial, which on his own will be pretty solid. Okay. Okay. Just making Mimic an absolute beast, I see. Sure trying awesome. to. I still, I still think Emperor Gladiator can, uh, can outpace Mimic quite a bit, because... Uh, if you manage to get past all of those, uh, the rollouts and stuff, the cool thing is uh, Mimic on click two gets his own Impervious, and Impervious does stack with um, Invincible, where you mm, you yeah. do get to reduce penetrating damage and you do get that roll. So interesting combos all around, but yeah. Okay. Right on. So the Gladiator team that I built uh, might seem like a bit of a uh, CC team. CC standing for, of course, competitive cop-out uh, style of team. Uh, I was looking at him. I'm like, man, what keywords does he have? You know, when I, when I hit soldier, I'm like, I love the soldier keyword, but my main, you know, want on a soldier theme team is like Josiah X. But Emperor Gladiator has his own way to get a Josiah X ability and also... Uh, they're both primes, so that doesn't work. So just maybe kind of not want to build a soldier. So I decided to jump. Uh, what can I do with Cos <laughs> Cosmic? And then once you see uh, a certain many faces of Doom character that oh, has yeah, the Cosmic yeah. keyword, uh, it becomes a little plain <laughs> to figure out what the team is going to be. <laughs> maybe um, a little uh, Dark Phoenix, Doom the Annihilating Conqueror, uh, Molecule Man kind of stuff. Yeah. Cosmic has something some real good stuff yeah <laughs> basically something like that so uh like simian said we got our emperor gladiator we have doom the annihilating conqueror who 
depending on who we switch out, it can be a Lord Doom, so that way there's no Pog generation, or uh, 90% of the time we'll probably do all caps Doom to cut down on their actions, uh, and he's just a great attacker. I, of course, went with, because <laughs> both flashes have the future and past keyword, I'm using a 30-point charge flash and then the 20-point TK flash, as well as I can fit another TK on the team in the form of, that's right, you guessed it, Franklin Richards. Now, I like Franklin as a cheap TK figure. He's 20 points. He's got sidestep and telekinesis. Fantastic four team ability. So the flashes now also have fantastic four, which I think is really fun. Uh, and I just really dig that. So now in one turn, we can. So Emperor Gladiator, just to go into him a little bit before we jump on the roll, I'll finish the rest of the team. Then we have a Dark Phoenix and we have Nathaniel Richards with the Latvarian Village. Uh, map bonus so what's this team kind of looking like like i said we switch out to all caps doom or maybe lord doom if we want to stop by center generation uh emperor gladiator now <laughs> the dude is a 14 speed eight range 12 attack four damage pen blast with his own prop which is awesome and he's got cosmic energy so he's not being outwitted uh so our goal here is give him full map reach which is very easy because he's emperor gladiator so he's already got eight range he's going to move seven with his running shot so that's our 15 square reach we start in the second square right so that's our 17 square reach so all we need is a six you know we can use a basic tk it doesn't even have to be a flash tk a basic tk from franklin and that will give him a 23 square reach uh and if if so be it if we need that extra square we can instead tk him with uh the tk flash instead so perfect it all works out that's great he has his own prob when he gets down there it looks pretty good now the Flash, of course, he's got that charge, and he can charge twice. So we give him a normal TK, move him out to the 8th square. He charges. Uh, he'll be the 15th square. Uh, another charge, he'll be in the 22nd square, swinging on the 23rd. So awesome. Get to your starting area with this charge Flash. He'll be a 12 for 4 as well by the time he gets there, which is awesome. And then Nathaniel Richards, uh, he can choose... You know, if he's next to any object, a friendly character can then get an attack power. Him or a friendly character, Jason friendly character, uh, can get that attack power. So, we're feeling a little froggy. We can go ahead, we could give Emperor Gladiator a Pulse Wave if we want to try to uh, cut down on his reach a little bit. But get a, uh, a big Pulse Wave off and just deal everybody on their team one damage. Or even, I think a smart choice would be Precision Strike, just in case they have Super Senses or any kind of rollout, you know, that can help us a little bit, you know, since now we've got Pen Blast and Precision Strike. Super nice, you know. Um, Dark Phoenix is obviously basic retail, you know, the... Uh, um, I guess I don't actually root for Molecule Man. It's either, uh, th be only 30 points left, so it's going to be Dark Phoenix or Molecule Man, something like that. I would, I would go with... I guess you could also do the other Valeria, so the 30 points Valeria yeah. that can group around. That yeah, wouldn't be a bad perplex. idea. Um, we do, don't have any Perplex on this team, so we would want her for a Perplex. So without wasting a Flash TK, we could Perplex up his speed, or probably, honestly, Perplex up Emperor, Emperor Gladiator's attack value, because he's going to need to hit. You know, he, uh, he himself does give me a leadership, which is nice. Um, but when he hits, he gets that confidence token, and when he has confidence tokens, he reduces penetrating damage, which is obviously great with Impervious. Um, and then you can remove a confidence token when he would take damage, and then he takes no damage at all. So, like, that's really awesome. So, you know, there's there's a right time to use things wow. like that, I would say. You could also so, use like, Morgan Le Fay to add Avengers so. to the team. The, the level of ch keyword cheating that we're at there's a lot where emperor there's gladiator a lot. giving latveria to avengers join to... latveria and that can join with avengers man like future yeah. what is it future past cosmic all becomes latverian right or latveria uh -huh. keyword yeah it's cosmic wild. future past keywords gain latveria and then yeah morgan lefay can make uh avengers and latveria a single theme wow so there's too much there's a little bit too much keyword cheating that's possible right now and then obviously the steve rogers can take any 50 point figure and make them an avenger and then just bleh, just keeps on going it's wild keyword cheating is wild anyways so yeah you know this team has options uh, i like the latvarian village map 
especially for Gladiator, I can then choose to give like that 30 point flash, the mastermind for the villagers, since Gladiator already has mastermind. So I can put my villagers super close to my opponent's starting area, since that's where I'm going to be anyways, for how far out my characters are going to go. And then after I send those guys out, I can just make sure I place them next to uh, Latvarian villagers. And then a really cool thing about that is the Latvarian villagers, where they start on the map, that's basically their starting area. So if, they, if I win map and I just move my guys next to them, they won't be able to target the Latvarian villager since that one would still be in its starting area. So even if they multi, well, number one, they just straight up can't, even if they were to quake, it would still be just targeting Gladiator or the Flash or whoever I give Mastermind to, and I could still just Mastermind it to that villager, which I love doing. So even if they have a Sky Tyrant or something, you can move it so that there's at least one villager next to you you can Mastermind to and he can't get to, and then one that you can Mastermind to that he just can't even target. So it'll just save, you know, it'll give him whatever reincarnation tokens, but it'll just save your Emperor Gladiator or whatever figure you want, you know, even if I want to move up all caps, Doom or something. So... The Liberian villagers are just this awesome way to stay safe. It's great. So obviously, like I said, you can do Molecule Man if you want to have more defense. You can do Dark Phoenix if you want the extra, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, you know, Retaliation, which is just awesome. And then, of course, you can do uh, that Valeria if you want a... Uh, I was going to say you could also do high, high Evo, but we already have two probs on the team. I don't think we need a third, which oh, is just another man. running shot pen blast good, figure, though. but you could. Yeah. He is good, yeah. So, like, there's just tons of options for Laveria, but that's what I was going to go with uh, for Emperor Gladiator, just to make him a kind of a beast. Yeah, that definitely works. Um, as you could probably tell from that, because of, well, and... Calder didn't even get into the Professor X option, but um, because of the keywords, it's almost a, an endless uh, opportunity of team building, which is really cool. Uh, at least a little. It's kind of really cool. But then, because uh, even going high Evo uh, with the Isotope E that he comes with, you could then swap some of those characters out with other characters that share the same name. Not sure. Also who that, yeah. Would, but like, yeah, the level of keyword cheating that you can do. Although at a certain point, you're wasting points to gain not a lot. Um, yeah, you currently, are. Currently, I don't think there's a ton of like Avengers stuff that's worth trying to sneak onto a team. Um, that would be better than just running like an Avengers theme team. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, we're we're outside of like the days of Hawkeye or whatever. But yeah. That Emperor Gladiator has a lot of options, and he's just pumps out a ton of damage while kind of just not taking any damage himself. Um, it's really hard to damage him because uh, he's got two ways to mitigate it. You can either roll your impervious, assuming he hits first, because he probably will with that crazy long reach. Uh, well, if he yeah. hits, you get that confidence token. Then you can reduce penetrating damage. You get to roll your impervious for everything but a pulse wave. And uh, pulse wave does max of one. So you get to roll impervious at some point no matter what. And if you're not uh, masterminding the damage and you would take more than whatever you're going to reduce it to, you could just choose to not and remove the confidence token. Yeah. Well, it's just great that you get a roll for impervious first. Since yeah, would, yeah, would, it makes him like, it's so good, dude. It's so good. Yeah, it, it, yeah. And then he destroys. Yeah, he shoots through blocking. So, man, there's that one square of blocking or just a little wall in the way he can get through it. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Uh, to cap off the episode, we got some Malcolm Rush questions. So, uh, Simi, why don't you go ahead uh, get us into these? Okay. So, uh, Malcolm, I was too. I, I apologize because. I was too confused as to what exactly you were asking. So uh, Malcolm says, let's talk about main themes and sets. Heroclix love to focus on main theme and sometimes sub themes. So please judge the set on only the main theme. I will ask about sub themes and sets another time. So, um, so we're judging sets on main themes 
And then he gives us a list of different themes for DC, Marvel, other comics, and uh, just independent sets. So we're going to list off the theme and then say which Heroclix set we think best represented that particular theme. So for DC, uh, starting off the the list, we've got the Batman theme. So Batman Family. Um, I didn't play back when the Batman set or like the Arkham Asylum set or any of that dropped. So my favorite and just going into like what I like out of Batman, it's got to be the Brave and the Bold or not Brave and the Bold. Jeez. The Batman animated series. I want them to make a Brave and the Bold set, but uh, the Batman animated series, I think, has the most Batman flavor to it, uh, of course. Like, how could it not? But like the, the sub-theme being Justice League uh, Unlimited or whatever it was, and the main theme just being everything that was cool about the show. So it was a really good show. Um, tons of really cool episodes are shown in that set. I yeah, I think that's my the best and my favorite from for that Batman theme. Okay, right on, right on. Uh, for Batman theme, this one was a little tough uh, since like really there's a ton of Batman sets. Like Joker's Wild is you know technically Batman, Harley Quinn, Gotham Girls, Batman. Like this animated series, um, but I'm gonna take it back a minute and say that this was probably the most fun Batman set I've ever played in, and that would be uh, the Gravity Feed for the Batman 66 TV oh, yeah. show. Uh, that thing was just really fun. I mean, that was pure. That was just pure Batman TV show. Now, they, it let you get some really wacky characters we will, we've still never seen. You know, it's just some ones that you have never, ever gotten before. And so, yeah, the Batman TV show is just this crazy, crazy fun hero click set. And you know I, what, I love the Death Trap and all really that stuff. Like, it's great. from that set. Oh, who's that? So this thir- this last Thursday, Devin pulled out the Mad Hatter, who has a oh, no. special power that's like no. characters taller than Mad Hatter. Or like, I don't know. He gives a negative to opposing characters that are smaller than the Mad Hatter figure. So the new scale means that almost... <laughs> None of the new figures are shorter than the Mad Hatter. Oh, no. Even with his big, like, yeah. effect. Yeah, thing? it's like, oh, so man. characters that are crouched, Shoot. like Hepzibah and some of, like, the other ones that are kind of, like, crouched down are still shorter. But okay. any of them that are, like, standing straight or, like, a slightly larger, like, Sentinel, the new uh, single-based yeah. Sentinel, of course, is, like, way bigger. Um Omega Red is even bigger. His like little ponytail makes him just slightly taller. So I think it was like he got a plus three to his mind control attack against characters that were shorter than him. And so, yeah, WizKids, get on it. Fix this figure from the Batman uh, 60s set, whatever that was called. In the deep dark lair of the Batman. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Next up is the Superman theme. Um, so there have been actual Superman sets. I'm not the biggest Superman fan, so I'm going to go with the set that I enjoyed the most Superman's from, and that would be, um, Trinity War. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Wonder Woman did have some good Superman's and world's finest also had some pretty decent Superman, uh, figures and I guess theme wise so I'm thinking of just the character theme wise uh, Trinity Wars got Lex it's got Ultraman it's got Superman you know it's I when I think of Superman it's like you know his big villains it didn't have dark side I don't think we had a dark side for quite a while did we um, but yeah that's that's my go to I'm not a huge Superman fan so theme is not that important to me but i liked trinity war so that's the set that i think did the best job on that stuff okay i do like trinity war a lot as a set i think that was a really really fun set but it was you know it was justice league trinity war so uh as far as superman goes uh i'm gonna go with the uh, the set that's based off one of the worst movies of all time, uh, Man of Steel. I 
I actually really enjoyed playing the General Zod out of this set, like, a lot, uh, even though he's way over-costed. Um, I also didn't mind, like, the Kryptonian, like, soldiers and scientists. I thought they were actually kind of fun. I, I played the Kryptonian scientists on a theme team, or on a scientist theme a lot with, uh, with Jor-El. I actually kind of enjoyed, like, some of those figures. And then, of course, like, I think Colonel Hardy is really good. I really like the generic soldiers from this set as well so all around you know pretty fun pretty fun set even if it has to be a superman set yeah sadly calder's favorite um don't say that good old, the good old boy in blue as they call him mm. uh mm, next up it. is the best set that had justice league theme uh so this one again like i could have done justice league trinity war i think justice league trinity war honestly had like a a real split there wasn't really like a main set but it did hit a ton of justice league stuff um so yeah i'm gonna double down on that one because again it's one of my favorite sets i could say like the jla or jlu set that uh but to be honest the animated stuff doesn't hit as much doesn't hit as much uh like there's no John Constantine, there's no Dark Justice League, um, and I I like characters that were like that. So yeah, I think Trinity War was a pretty decent one. Uh, alternatively, man, what's another good, real solid Justice League set? Because World's Finest didn't even World's Finest really wasn't even like that great of a Justice League set. So yeah, I'm going with Trinity War. No, twice. Best Superman I don't blame you. theme I, and Justice League theme. I almost went with Trinity War, because I do like the Trinity War set a lot, especially since it gave us that uh, the Trinity Justice League, you know, like the, the Superman that gives everybody Superman, the Batman with everybody Batman, Wonder Woman, who didn't have a team ability at the time, gave people, like, support or whatever. So, like, that was really cool. It gave us, like, a really strong, like, version of the Trinity. Uh, but for the Justice League set that I'm going to go to, it's going to be the first Justice League set that I ever bought boosters from, and that is going to be the first carded DC set, simply titled Justice League. Um, uh, I don't know. I I really enjoyed the sculpts from the, the you know the Avengers set that first had cards, and then just the Justice League set that first had cards. There was something really wacky and cool about the sculpts. So in this set, there are fun characters that I like to play. Um, a lot of them were villains, were like Parasite or that Joker that's like King Joker and all that stuff. Oh, the At the same Joker, time, yeah. though, it had uh common easy to get versions of like batman aquaman green arrow like stuff like that and then it had you know super rare versions like more powerful versions of like batman superman wonder woman uh the flash like all of that so i think it just had a solid just league it even filled out you know it had green lancer and even had a little bit of a big barda mr miracle i don't know if they're justice league members or not <laughs> i um, think so i mean whatever not like okay. not um, always but they probably have the keyword occasionally yeah. Uh, um, also, you know, you can't. Who can forget? Uh, Vigilante does not have a Just League keyword, but just got to do big shout out for Vigilante flying motorcycle. I miss him every day. But yeah, very nice. I actually, I do want to change my answer to uh, Brave and the Bold. Um, Ooh, because all the peanut bases just like that the peanut good. bases make like really good team ups with uh, Justice League members. There's the. Uh, the Green Lantern Flash, where the Green Lantern's making like a treadmill or just like a path, I guess. Yeah. There's the Superman Flash uh, racing Green Lantern, Green Arrow. Um, I can't remember what their team up was called. I guess they when they teamed up, it was also called Brave and the Bold. Um, that like comic run. Uh, then of course the the Chaco Cookie Chair Manhunter. Oh yes, is like yes. one of the one of the best Manhunters. Um, and best sculpts. So, yeah, there's a ton of really good stuff in there. Brave and the Bold. Uh, still a, a pretty solid set. Um, I think the only thing that's kind of weak in it is, like, the commons. The the Bruce and Clark Kent look like they're out of, like, an Archie comic instead of out of a DC comic. It's They look weird, but... Yeah. Otherwise, pretty decent set. They do look, they look very strange. They're just, like... Really sad skull. I believe this was. Were they alter egos? Did they have that mechanic back then? I can't remember, but oh, there was something weird. Yeah, they did. 
but it was like only for inside this set. So yeah, you could shift into like the Batman who was hardly any better or the Clark Kent could turn into okay. um, Superman who had, I guess, charge for with four damage. So it was, it was okay. Hmm. What are they doing over there? What are they doing up there? All right. Uh, what is next? Is this major members oh, of Justice the League? The next is, yeah. So the next is major members of Justice League. So that aren't Superman and Batman. So the, the other seven, if you will. So um, kind of hard to pick a better Wonder Woman centric set than Wonder Woman 80th. Same with like the Flash yeah. has the Flash set. Um, yeah. Uh, other than like the sets that we've already named for the normal Justice League any character that's gotten a specific set for them. Like the flash set has all of his rogues. As far as I know, uh, I'm sure that they're missing like a few, but I don't pay that close attention. So um, I assume that they got all of them on. I don't know. Simeon. That's a, a Simeon moment right there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with one of eighty. Like that's just such an awesome set. Like, you know, and it there's a little bit of recency bias obviously going on, but man, yeah, as far as Just League goes, you know, it fills out the major members of the Just League: Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash. Like, you know, yeah, it has it just it's awesome. Makes them brings in the Captain Sidekick mechanic, even though there aren't really any good sidekicks for Justice League necessarily. Um, but it's still awesome. You know, it was it was the only fault I really have is that. Uh, is it Huntress who's a sidekick and they never made Robin? And I'm like, you didn't make you made Batman in a set where he was a captain. And I get it, he gave <laughs> yeah. him stealth. So Robin should already have stealth, but still, like Batman and Robin, that's his sidekick, bro. Like that's like the one fault. That's, yeah, uh, that's the, still, the most like, iconic like sidekick yeah. duo. Yeah. But yeah, dude, that's such an awesome set. Alright, and then we go into the DC cosmic theme which I feel like is a real easy one because I think War of Light was just the vast majority of DC cosmic stuff is lantern stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And there's even like a, there's even an anti-monitor that shows up in that set kind of, not really in the set, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know. War of Light is too good to not be considered for the top running of uh, DC cosmic. Yeah. Uh, and I just have to agree. Like, it's War of Light, man. That's that's so awesome. Like, if if I could go back in time to any era of Hero Clicks, it it would easily be so I could actually play in every single month of War of oh, Light, yeah. like in real time as it came out. Because I only ever was able to play in one month. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. So back I would I was... totally want to go back and <laughs> play through it all. In 2019, when I was going to three venues, if there if that had been like three venues available when war of light was going on and i was able to hit three <laughs> venues and get uh, i mean it would have cost me an arm and a leg to play every month but i mean that was some of the best sealed is i wouldn't say balanced but it was pretty pretty balanced um yeah. at least like you you could pull fairly well with commons and uncommons and stuff uh and rares but yeah uh and then any other dc sets so I guess just like the shout out section. Um man, DC doesn't get like a ton of love, but yeah, I think, you know, the Flash set is probably one of my standouts from DC. Um Teen Titans, of course, being the absolute worst set ever made for any reason. Yeah. Uh Rebirth is a decent set. I think like looking back it's like an okay is set. It? Is it? I mean, as Are far as sure? themes go, as far as themes go, you've got like Teen Titans. You've got some good Batman family stuff. Uh, the chase theme is cool, even though it wasn't good. Um, I don't know. I think Rebirth is it's fine as far as like collector goes. Uh, as far as like playability, it's probably lacking quite a bit. It's got a really cool yeah. sculpts in it. You've got that flex, the Superman. Um, Starfire's got a cool sculpt. Lex has got a really cool sculpt. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's, I do like that Lex a it's lot. Good collectability wise, it's pretty bad 
playability wise, but depends on, I guess, what you're looking for out of the set. Uh, do you have a, a final shout out Calder for DC? Yeah. So, so sort of keep in line, I guess, uh, a DC set that I think had like one of the best consistent like themes is probably have to go to like the flash set. When I think of like a set that's about one character, I, I think I think of the flash set. It, it filled out crazy parts of his rogues gallery it brought in all these speedsters. It brought, you know, Central City's where he's from. So the Central City police officer, even though I hate to say him, um, like all that stuff. And that's just because Chance McCall killed me with him. So like <laughs> anyways, like I, the only part I would fault about that set is the chase theme. Uh, the chase theme not being like, and I don't know anything about the Trinity of Sin. Uh, so they might be related to the Flash somehow, but I don't think so. So I, I know like... That would be the only thing. Other than that, I think it's like, wow, what a set. Like, if I was a Flash fan, I would be like, they, you know, they gave me alternate versions of Barry Allen. They gave me alternate versions of people that have been the Flash. Like, that's just awesome. So, yeah, I, I definitely think that's a great set, like, theme-wise for DC. Yeah. Um, For, like, old, what I would consider old DC, Crisis is a pretty good set. Because you, I think that's the last time we ever got the Monitor like the an actual monitor and not the anti monitor um but there's yeah there's a lot of really good stuff that we don't get a ton of in normal sets so um what is it the the metal men uncle sam uh dr savannah i don't think we've gotten a dr savannah jeez i don't i guess i could just search and see but uh we've gotten multiple Oh, there was one in Trinity War. Okay. Uh, so, again, Trinity War, third answer. Yeah, it's always good. Huh. Uh, no, <laughs> moving on to Marvel, uh, because I've got way more experience uh, enjoying Marvel sets because there's like three times as many every year. So, first one on Marvel is Spider-Man theme. Calder, do you want to take this one first? Um, yeah. I think when I think of a set that's purely Spider-Man theme... You know, this could also be recency bias, but I don't think any other Spider-Man set has a better Spider-Man theme than uh, Venom Absolute Carnage. Like, uh, okay. between the chases and then you had every single, like, pretty much main player character from Spider-Man's, like, friends and family, whatever, that are, like, Spider-Man family. Um, and then you gave them all the alter e or the whatever, the secret identity stuff. So I, I think that definitely just did the Spider-Man like family keyword itself had like just the best theme. Yeah. Spider-Man gets a ton of love, which I mean, to be fair, one of like the most popular characters ever created. Yeah. Uh, but amazing Spider-Man from back in the day, really solid set, a little high costed today, but some really cool figures and stuff in that superior foes was like not only a great comic run, but pretty solid uh sealed play and a pretty solid set i think you could still use quite a bit of it in games today and have no problem uh but when i yeah. think of like a set that really speaks to spider-man being like one of the best themes in it like one of the main themes in it i instantly think of earth x because uh just you. The vast majority is Spider-Man. I hate uh, you so much. With the, I hate you so with, much right now, dog. <laughs> with the exception of like some of the garbage Earth X characters got, okay. got snuck in. Uh, All right, let's slow <laughs> that. But no, truly. Uh, so this is where the the Sinister Six United trait. Uh, I think I think this was the first there. version of this we saw, or was no Harley Quinn had. Yeah, Harley Quinn had a uh, Secret Six version of this. But the Sinister Six United is like a really good trait. You've got Silver Sable, Lizard, Morbius, Rhino, Sandman, Tinker, uh, all kinds of Jackal, uh, Ezekiel, Sims. It truly is like a 50-50 split on the set. I think Spider-Man related characters come out a little bit ahead of Earth-X characters. But if you needed one of every Spider-Man villain, like this would be a pretty much one-stop shop for, for that. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you though. <laughs> uh, next up for Marvel is going to be, 
what set we think has the best Fantastic Four theme. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, yeah this is, once again, I think pseudo recency bias. I think the first uh, Fantastic Four or set i was gonna like say fantastic forces but i don't know dude i don't know nothing about that so i'm just gonna go with the one from last year it's uh it was obviously the first set that filled out you know fantastic four since like seven or eight whatever years ago right so right. that was just really cool it filled out a few different versions of the team it filled out like the wolverine hulk uh ghost rider now i guess it didn't because it wasn't even johnny so it didn't really fill out that version totally it had a few of them though it did have that wolverine uh, from that run in it and then it had you know spider-man from that run and then it had a few other ones a few other it filled out enough fantastic four stuff where i was like it puts it over future foundation for me because future foundation is not so much fantastic four when i think fantastic four and it's definitely no. more so the uh the kids and stuff yeah and it has a heavy cosmic theme in it so i, I would give it to this first uh fantastic four set we got from 2020 yeah and to be fair, uh, outside of like clobbering time, I don't oh, think God. there's ever been like a main fantastic, like a truly main, mainly fantastic four set where it like had that many characters. Fantastic Forces has like the majority of like the normal Fantastic Four, and maybe they just weren't handing out the keyword as often back then. But yeah, uh, that plain Fantastic Four set has multiple versions throughout history of the main four and then multiple versions of people that teamed up to be part of the fantastic four and then of course you know silver surfer franklin valeria doom um what uh, reed reed richard's dad whatever that guy's name is uh oh yeah Nathan. richard richard richards i think is his name yes mr uh, richard richards <laughs> yeah no um i think he's in that set is he or maybe that Maybe that wasn't uh, Nathaniel Richards might have been in Future Foundation. But no, uh, plenty of Fantastic Four stuff to choose from. And then, of course, there's like the Frightful Four was in that set as well. Whereas Future Foundation, yeah, Future Foundation was, I don't know, what what even was the sub theme in Future Foundation? Just cosmic stuff? It seemed like that. Just weird cosmic stuff. And like, yeah, we did get a few. uh, we did get a few like rogue gallery uh, Fantastic Four characters that we didn't have before, like Diablo and. Oh, that's true. So we did get a few of like the the missing bad guys, but I still think the original Fantastic Four was better. Yeah. Right. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and jump into da na 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 the X Men theme. So mm. set we think. Uh, that had the best x-men theme you know there's a ton yeah. <laughs> like a literal yeah. ton of x-men sets uh both in modern now and then throughout the years that they have made them this is but yeah this is the one I, that I could probably do best worst favorite uh overrated yeah. underrated because yeah there's so many to choose from just from from my pick i feel like when people think about the X-Men, if they've been playing a whole game, a whole like lifespan of the game, no set jumps out more than giant sized X-Men. That was an awesome, awesome like X-Men set. I, th- I don't know if it was this the first set to have the super boosters in it. Uh, um... Because uh, whatever it had, like, you know, the Sentinels nemesis uh, onslaught, you know, all that really cool stuff. Like, yeah, I think it was pretty I think cool. Because, yeah, the next set that the, did that would have been, what, Galactic Guardians? Yeah, it would have been Galactic Guardians would have been the next one, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, all the chases being the duo figures. Like, once again, duo figure chases are just cool. So, like, Gambit Rogue, Colossus Wolverine, Cable and Deadpool, very popular ones. Uh, the LEs were all cool. The uh, Getting the, the horsemen, you know. Um, all the super rares were awesome. Obviously, people talk like crazy about that Magneto, but I know I always wanted the uh, Angel of Death, whatever, uh, Horseman of Death, Wolverine. Looks yeah. cool. Same thing with that Hulk. Looked really crazy cool. So, like, had awesome super rares. Even though it had, like, a kind of, now that I'm looking at it, a very small amount of super rares, um, just because I guess it had the Colossal Booster. But 
what like a fun set. And this was also the first Fast Forces I ever got. So the Fast Forces for this came out like a while after the set or something weird because the Fast Forces for Giant Size X-Men actually have uh, the Oreo dials. The original set does not. Uh, but this was one of the first Fast Forces I ever got besides my like movie Avengers Fast Forces. And so I actually played these Fast Forces figures like a ton. So it's pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't around when Giant Size X-Men came out. I did collect a lot of it. Um, most of it like ended up being fairly cheap retroactively, like way down the line. But tons of really cool stuff. Hits a lot of like the storylines that I really like. Has things like the Reavers and stuff in it, and the, uh, of course, like Apocalypse is uh, Horsemen and stuff like that. So that yeah, it's a really good set. I I can't ever not say Wolverine in the X Men though, because oh, <laughs> just understandable. Yeah, Wolverine in the X Men hits all of my favorite people in the X Men like legitimately. Uh, of big, all the big people cipher in that set. Guy. Well, yeah, yeah, Cyber. So Cyber, Cyber is a character that doesn't even appear in Heroclix like ever after this, I don't think. Um, but one of the first and only times that like I saw Cyber and he has hallucinogenic claws. One of like the things, I don't even know if in the comics, well, in the comics he's not even, he doesn't look like this anymore. And I don't think he goes by the name Cyber anymore. But uh, back in like the early days of Wolverine comics, one of like his huge nemesis bad guy whatever's and the hallucinogenic claws was like one of the cool parts about him he'd like claw wolverine and be like oh yeah well he heals but he'd hit him with these crazy hallucinogenic hallucinogenic drugs so wolverine would just go on like an acid trip for the rest of the comic oh my gosh was a great great way to uh let the artist just like stretch their legs into crazy town Do whatever they want yeah yeah but no the uh the beautiful Phantom X and Spiral that this set brought. Um, the this set had a really cool Gambit sculpt, sculpt uh, Bishop. Uh, I think the only thing this set's kind of missing is a, a solid. Um, what's his name? Uh, cable. Uh, yeah, it's missing like a solid oh, sure. cable. But it also had it had the team up bases which. The, the team bases just made... These were actually, like, thematic ones. They weren't just, like, the plain whatever. Um, so, like, the, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. If you can actually get a filled-out team base, it looks really cool. It actually looks like, you know, a interesting diorama kind of thing. Um, it also has probably, in my opinion, one of the best multiple mans we've ever gotten because the way that this multiple man works is he can generate anybody that is named multiple man Madrix or Jamie Madrix of the same or lower points. So you get your choice of any of them ever made or will. Oh, be. nice. Um, but then also, yeah, the chase set is the Phoenix five, which probably one of the most iconic chase sets in hero clicks. So yeah, it's a good set. Okay. Right on. Uh, and then on the flip side, a, another, you know, obviously the other more pop, most popular uh, Marvel team is the Avengers. So what set do I think had the best Avengers theme? You know, I was originally going to say Avengers Assemble. But I remember, like, you know, doing whatever with that set and being like, I don't want to buy any of this because yeah. it had the... The comments. It just seems so were... lame. They were so bad. They were kind of so, junky, like throwaway characters that I never like hazmat. Never yeah. heard of hazmat. Still haven't. Doesn't really exist in my brain. Why? I yeah. mean, the fact that I can remember it, it is just because it's such such a standout so, as like a character that did not matter to me. Why is it so big? Reptile. Or that's Al. Remember I amazing, why you so big? amazing why you so big? Avenger why you so bad? reptile. Yeah. Hey, so actually, that was one of the few figures I was excited to get because uh, as a kid watching the Superhero Squad show on Cartoon Network, uh, Red Skull was uh, not Red Skull. Reptile was made up like for that show. So it real. I actually was really happy to finally get him. Uh, unironically, I was actually pretty stoked to get Reptile. So 
uh, only because I, I really like the superhero squad show. But my actual pick, I just wanted to say that like it was close to being Avengers Assemble, but I just remember like, every time I look at the time, I'm like, ah, oh, it's so bad. My actual pick is going to be the Age of Ultron uh, storyline OP set. And I know it's got this crazy heavy focus on all this Ultron drones and everything, but what puts it over uh, in, for me is the Avengers Roundtable. As much as people can hate that, whatever. Oh, yeah. Avengers had those cards, like those little identi cards for the Avengers yeah. is very comic accurate. The round table, very comic accurate. Um, the big Avengers like card they sent to stores was cool. And then I absolutely fell in love the first time I saw the Quinjet sculpt. I was like, are you kidding me? We're going to get a Quinjet. That's so awesome. Um, it obviously, you know, it brought in the big three. We had Iron Man, we had Thor. It gave us the o original Avengers uh, Fast Force, was, which was awesome. And we got a ton of classic Avengers villains and like people they would like team up with, you know, like Hercules and whatever. But we got villains like Grim Reaper and Graviton, uh, obviously tons of Ultrons, Kang the Conqueror. Like I, I this is another uh, storyline OP set that I only played one month in. So I would also, you know, I wouldn't even mind going back in time playing in this uh organized play kit, even though I know if someone pulled like Black Panther or something, you would get instantly stomped. Or like almost any of the chases, but yeah. still, like, do not want a solid, another, yet another solid... test one. Yeah, no, thank you on that one, I guess. Uh, but like, dude, what just a solid Avengers set? It just it filled out so much cool stuff. Um, so yeah, sure would love to get a Modam. Uh, hey man, <laughs> she's very important to the Superior Strategium storyline, so you know, I had to have her. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember who it was at my venue when that storyline was going on. But like three times in a row, pulled Modam, and was just like, I'd rather have like any other super rare. And I was like, Hey, at least you're pulling super rares. So I'm pulling like. You should be able to tell. She's heavy. Yeah. She's thick, boys. She heavy, man. Like, she's like, and she's so awkward. She doesn't fit in any of my clicks boxes. So she's just oh, chilling no. with the colossals, you know. Way too big. Yeah. Even Modok, the Captain <laughs> yeah. America one, fits in there. Like she's just way too friggin' big. But yeah. Anyways, what's your Avengers pick? Uh, uh, mine's gonna have to be Chaos War, um, Ooh. just because it's it doesn't quite hit, and like maybe maybe I'm like inaccurate. It doesn't quite hit all of my favorite Avengers stuff, but you know it has Iron Man, Ant Man, Ms. Marvel, Wolverine, Wasp. It's got you know the one of the last combinations of X Men and Avengers like mutants and Avengers before it all got like wacky and haywire and we couldn't combine them for a long time. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's got all like the normal, you know, Thor, uh, Hawkeye, all like the people that you would assume would be in an Avenger set. And then it also has like Ares with like the, the gun toting, like, Ooh, double, I like that Ares. Yeah. yeah the double the gun one. Ares. Yeah. Uh, it of course has Sentry and void and then the chase Sentry void, which is, an amazing figure. Um, but yeah, like, you know, this was, this hit a lot of like prime Avenger stuff. When I started picking up Avenger comics, um, I really liked the Sentry and the storylines he was involved in. So actually getting like a good version of the Sentry was pretty cool. Um, Taskmaster is one of like the, still one of like the cooler oh, yeah. Taskmasters that we've ever gotten. Um, but yeah, then uh, of course, because I, I just really like them, the peanut base duo figures, Lockjaw, yes. Hairball, Vision, and Scarlet awesome. Witch. Um, one of the last version of Wonder Man we've ever gotten, I think. But yeah, not a great set for villains, but an absolute awesome set for um, Avengers. Uh, next up, it is going to be like the Avengers Big Three. So that's going to be Captain America, Thor. Iron Man. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, so I bought the first boosters I ever bought was just I was buying them online. It was the, the original Captain America set. But as far as like a set that I felt like captures Cap really well, I still don't feel like we've had a set that really captures uh, Captain America that well. So I have to give this one to the Invincible Iron Man set. I really, really enjoyed uh, playing the Invincible Iron Man set. I think it had a really awesome Iron Man like theme to it. Obviously, it was cool to pull all the mansion rings, the chases, all being these. Uh, I think they were just comic cover versions of Iron Man, but still, they were really cool. That was like the first chase theme where I, 
I felt compelled to like complete it because I think that was also like the first set I even bought into um, where I was like, whoa, colored bases. What in the world? Like, yeah. so I, I really, really dug that Invincible Iron Man set. The war machines in it felt like total beasts. I really liked those guys. You know, it gave us all these weird, goofy villains like like Blizzard and Unicorn and like all these like Scarecrow, like of course. And then, Unicorn. oh man, dude, big big Detroit Steel mark. I am like yeah. I love Detroit Steel. Detroit Steel. Uh, getting uh, the Wrecking Crew was also like really cool. Um, the Iron Man War Machine duo figure. For some I don't know why they didn't give this two hundred sixty five point figure Dominable at the time, but whatever, it's fine now. But still, I, and I played the heck out of it, like. I really, really liked this this Iron Man set. Like yeah. it was awesome. It also was the last uh, set where we almost got a complete set of the Alpha Flight characters. So. Oh yeah, that too. Invincible Iron Man gets a lot of points from me just because of that. Uh, no, that I finally did uh, get a full set of the the Iron Man chases, and I I really wish they'd go rather than doing Venomized characters. I really wish that they would start doing more. Um stuff like this where it's like alternate timelines is really cool alternate versions is really cool i get real tired of like venomized oh, yeah. and carnageized and symbiote characters like it's, it just it seems like such a cop out well it's easy so characters and it's, it's popular so similar right now because iron pharaoh does something completely different than iron soldier and iron slayer and paladin and viking um but Venom Iron Man does something almost the exact same as Venom Thor or, uh, you know, like any like Venom Rocket Raccoon, like range based characters with a symbiote all do about the same thing. Like there might yeah. be some slight differences, but it's like they're all going to have shape change plasticity and they're all going to have some sort of, uh, I don't know, tendril ability or something. Who knows? But anyhow, um, my Big three Marvel set. Uh, man, I guess like Secret Invasion or I don't know. Secret Invasion hits a ton of like the that doesn't have like the, the big three really, though. No, not I, don't, really. I don't know. It doesn't um, even have a Steve Rogers in the set. Well, that's I don't even know if it has a Thor. Does need... it have a Thor? Does it even have need... a Thor Odin those, in that set? Those terrible Avengers, though. Okay, I just want like the main, oh, the good ones, like nice. Wolverine and nice, Iron Man. Man. Nice. Oh, Wolverine is a main Avenger. <laughs> I guess for you it would be. Uh, I'll go with not. ABPI because that. Okay. I, I think ABPI was WizKids making. Uh, what was it? Not Endgame, but um, Infinity yeah. War. What's that? Infinity War. Infinity yeah, War. Infinity War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. ABPI was just Infinity War, uh, without hitting copyright issues like we got smart hulk we got um a bunch of like black panther stuff wakanda stuff um of course like electra made a huge point in the movies so there was that namor likewise black bolt coming in to save the day like all those characters no uh but it did it really felt like uh the most movie ish we could do without like hitting copyright infringement kind of things so oh, I'll, I'll go with that sure. one. It's a pretty good one. All right. Uh, for the Marvel cosmic theme, obviously there's like a ton of good Marvel, like cosmic stuff. You know, Fantastic Four had a heavy, co or Future Foundation had a heavy cosmic theme. Uh, obviously there's, uh, you know, even ABPI, I would say, had a crazy heavy cosmic theme. Oh, yeah. Avengers the, Infinity, uh, of course. Uh, any whatever. of the Guardian Elders of the Universe. You know? Yeah, all the Elders of the Universe, you know. Um, but I've definitely, you know, I mean, you could say Infinity Challenge to an extent too. Uh, I'm going to have to give it to Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't think, I don't think they have made a set that I have been as excited to buy from, uh, Marvel wise or Guardian from then the Guardians of the Galaxy from 2014. I mean, the zombie chases, uh, oh, the yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, that set was so much fun and sealed and a crazy amount of Cree generics. I was buying Cree like a mother. Like, I was buying so many Cree. It was awesome. <laughs> the uh, Chitari generics were cool for, like, you know, if you wanted to play Avengers movie scenarios, like, that was really awesome. Um, yeah. I I bought one brick of this set. I pulled in the chase, and then I got addicted to trying to buy as many singles boosters as possible to get another chase. I probably spent 
I probably bought 40, 50 singles boosters and never, ever pulled a chase from that set. So it burnt me real hard uh, in the long run for Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but that one brick that I bought where I pulled Red Skull, the chase that I was the most excited for at the time, it just it meant a lot to me seeing it when I saw the preview for it. And that was awesome. Like, I... I freaking loved that Guardians of the Galaxy set. It was there was fun. There was like Tyrant was fun to play. Um, uh, all the Guardians were fun. You know that, that the Nebula that crazy Beyonder? broken. Beyonder, yep, Beyonder was yeah. awesome. There was the you know Guardian suit Iron Man, uh, Rocket Raccoon and Groot were really cool. Yeah, I, I love that Guardians of the Galaxy set. Yeah, it's a great set. I I had to pick and choose like different pieces from it. I never bought any of the sealed because it definitely sold out it's like one of those sets that you hardly ever find any sealed of uh i'm gonna go with so this one was kind of a a semi-flop in my opinion but definitely fits like the the great cosmic kind of marvel stuff and that's avengers infinity um because we'll probably never get another infinity eternity living tribunal uh lord chaos and master order like those huge cosmic entity kind of things we'll probably never get. And for the most part, they did an okay job kind of representing them. Um, I'm not going to pretend like living tribunal is a good design, but uh, for, for 900 points is 900 points, his big dial, or I thought he had like a, I think it's like, guy. yeah, but the uh, guy, right. Yeah. He's, he's not amazing. You know, they all they almost all started with like phasing top dial, uh, but pulling like eternity and sealed, really pulling any of them in sealed because you were bound to pull one two by two. It was just cool to see what you could do, and uh, yeah, there's just you know we got one of like the coolest looking hulks in that set. Uh, Wasp part of the True. Avengers was really cool. The vehicles and terrain were cool, and then we also got like the space knights. So that was. We got Space Knights and Guardians and kind of, but not really, but kind of. We got uh, gems, Infinity Gems. Uh, that's true. The the traits, yeah. Funny to look at those now and be like, uh Yeah, not yeah. nearly as good as... Mom, I, w- I want ABPI Infinity Gems. Honey, we have Infinity Gems at home. The Infinity Gems at home. <laughs> you know, like, it's, yeah. it's kind of like okay traits. I want, uh, I want uh, yeah. ABPI Power Gem. We have it at home, and then you just look at Drax. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. No thanks. Uh, all right. Uh, and then lastly, just any other Marvel sets. So I'm just going to say Marvel set that I was just really happy that they made because it was a Marvel storyline I really enjoyed, even though they completely botched who they decided to waste half the set on. Uh, that would be Earth-X. Uh, all the Earth-X figures, you know, were they very uh, like competitive play-wise? Not really, even though I did win a state to that uh, title, Captain America, of course. Um, the Earth X set was just, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I enjoyed the idea for the Ultra Chase. I enjoyed that it got a lot of the major players from the main Earth X storyline done, you know, since they couldn't do any Fantastic Four or X Men figures in that set. Hopefully, we can change that in like the future and we can get all of the X Men related characters that were in that set. They've now given us pretty much the rest of the Fantastic Four from that set. And then anything from Paradise X as well would be great, but I I've got to give it to Earth yeah. X being a set that I was pretty uh, hyped up for. Also, what like what a pick for an Ultra Chase, man. Oh yeah, like, um, although I I think they really botched it by not giving Marvel a version of the KC team ability. Um, yeah, and I, I assume that's just because they didn't give the Earth X Captain America Ellie any kind of team yeah. ability. Um, and they really writ themselves in a corner by giving him the Earth X keyword, which is why they ended up having to waste half the set on Spider-Man, because otherwise everything in that set would have just had the Earth X keyword. Yeah. You know, and it would have just been like you auto pull a theme team right. every time. They had to, they had so, to yeah. split it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. One, one Marvel set to kind of shout out. Um, I will say Days of Future Past, while not being a full set, was a cool set. If you if you got into it before the the price got like really jacked up high, and then um, the the old Web of Spider Man set 
has some of my favorite sculpts as far as like Spider-Man stuff go. Not really great dials, but like that's, you know, the the night crawler that has hypersonic with like 14 speed, 10 for 2 that one uh is in that set and bombastic bagman's in that spe- set, uh the original cosmic spider-man's in that set. Um and then I'll give a shout out to one of like the the worst Marvel sets. Oh, you know what? The Mighty Thor is also one of like the the best. Could have thrown that in. Oh yeah, like the oh for sure. Yeah, really good set. Um, yeah, that is an awesome set. Uh, But no, one of one of the worst for for both Marvel and DC were the fifteenth anniversary Elseworlds and What If when they tried to bring back the REV system and we got common, uncommon, and rare re sculpts. And then some of the super rares were okay. So it was like half the stuff that you pulled, over half the stuff you pulled was just worthless. Like probably never even going to play it. Um, To this day, I've played maybe a handful of Elseworlds stuff, like probably like a quarter of Elseworlds set, despite owning the majority of it. And then 15th anniversary, what if... Uh, outside of um, the Runaways and a few of like the Super Rares, haven't played anything from What If. I've never even played any of like the. I, I pulled the Venom Punisher and sealed, and that was the one and only time I played mm-hmm. him. Yeah, what a what just. A bad, he doesn't even get running shot anywhere viewer. on his dial. No. Do you know that? Like not a, no no nowhere on his dial does he get running shot. Bro, he's Punisher, dog. That's what yeah. he does. That's what he does. Uh, all right. Uh, next thing is other comics. So independent comics. Believe it or not, uh, there aren't actually a ton of sets that we would say are indie style sets that are specifically based off of comic books. Um, no. So for me, I guess I'll go to my personal favorite, I mean, but I'm going to go with uh, Wave 2 of... I shouldn't even say Wave 2. I guess it kind of has to be Wave 1 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That would okay. be their more comic book themed wave because Wave 2 had the animated stuff. So yeah, I'm just sort of written to a corner here. Uh, there's not a lot of comic book based sets really um, besides Marvel and DC. So I'll have to go yeah. yeah with Wave 1 of Ninja Turtles. We got a really fun Casey Jones. We obviously got the Image Comic Chases, the red bandana, black and white turtles, which is really cool. And overall, like the hype surrounding the set, a fun shredder to play, you know, filling out a lot of characters that never existed before. It was really fun. Uh, a dominant in the meta Krang figure, you know. So, yeah. And then I think also, uh, I guess they did have some animated figures in this one, but yeah, it's fine. I uh, I still super enjoy, and like Monster X was just like this goofy, fun figure I enjoyed playing. Uh, and just huge shout out to that Casey Jones, man. What a 30 point burst. Love it. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna have to give it to the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set, the first one for my uh, my comic book, my independent comic book uh, choice. Yeah, I I really wish we had a new version of the indie set because there was some really cool team abilities and sculpts and characters, uh, Rasputin, Hellboy. Uh, let's see, I, I think Witchblade got made, but I can't remember. Mm. Um, and then uh, what's the Judge Dredd, uh, Judge Dredd, Lobster yeah. Johnson, like that kind of stuff, like really cool stuff. I really, I can't really even say that one's like one that I would bother picking up though, because outside of the sculpts, don't really care for it. Um, but the Watchmen, definitely, despite the, like the dials being really old, really cool set to pick up. Uh, really good yeah. storyline. That one's plenty fine um technically there's been wwe comics and gears of war comics and street fighter comics but that's not like where those properties began so i'll discount those same with um the the mirror universe uh next gen from trek only appeared in comics those weren't like on the tv series so technically those would fit in this but kind of a terrible theme so actually like those are those are probably the worst one because uh the chase is for uh the trek i'll just call it like next gen trek stuff 
I really wish we could have gotten almost anything like Borg versions of characters would have been cool. We got the cutest of Borg, but like, man, even like setting us up for like Voyager or Deep Space would have been better than characters I had literally never even knew existed until they made them. All right, very cool. So, anyways, uh, others. Now, this is any hero quick set that is not based on comics. Uh, this is difficult, but I think it's got to go to WWE. Yeah. It would be a landslide, not difficult at all. If yeah, I was two say, was out. it's not at all difficult. It. Like, yeah, never has Wizkids WWE. knocked a indie, a, a non Marvel DC like indie set out of the park than WWE. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe, um, because they, yeah, they did yeah. have a cool mechanic. They did make, like, a really big full first set. But, man, WWE just, for such a small set, it's got so much life to it. It's got so much you can use. Uh, and the team ability gives it, like, way more power than, like, you know, had they not put that team ability on it, nobody would have ever would have ever probably bothered playing a like multiverse uh, game with these figures, but true. True. So yeah, that one, that one, they just, they killed it. And with that, that is all the questions we have from Malcolm rush from all of our listeners, which is going to pretty much wrap up the show. So guys, if you want to support the dial H for hero clicks brand, the podcast, the YouTube channel, and you're listening to this and you have not liked us on Facebook or followed us on Twitter. Let's get more Facebook likes than Donnie Pepper Cricket, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, <laughs> come on. Goodness gracious, come on. I get it. People know more about pro wrestling than they do about hero clicks. So, understandable. There's a bigger fan base there. But still, guys, we should be able to beat a Nebraskan pro wrestler, especially someone who ruined your boy's favorite shirt. We can't let that happen. Not ever again. We got to beat Donnie Pepper Cricket. If you're listening to this right now, you enjoy listening to Dial H for Hero Clicks, then go like our Facebook page. Leave us a review on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, wherever you listen. It helps people see the show. It means a lot to us. Samin and I, we love it when we see a review. We only get a review every, like, gosh, more than every six months or so. It, we don't we don't get a lot of reviews, uh, which hurts, guys. It cuts deep. And we really yeah. love seeing reviews because we love to see what people think of the show because that, you know, that makes you know us should get... leave us a review and deserves to leave us a review. Or, oh, I don't know, that? nay, even a follow on Twitter is uh, Mutant Head Crab, who clearly ah. follows our content but somehow doesn't actually follow us because they responded yeah. to one of our tweets while not even following not, us. How'd you see the yeah. tweet without following us? Yeah. I don't understand this. So we got a little bit of a stalker mm. action going on. Mutant head crab. I feel like little, it's on uh, purpose. Like, I'm going to not follow you to I, respond. Yeah, I guarantee you what So it is. that you'll notice very, that I don't follow you. Very spiteful person, this yeah. mutant head crab. But I suppose we purpose. already knew that, now didn't we? <laughs> um, I like... No, no, yeah. no. I don't know if you've noticed this. There is now a counter to mutant head crab. Uh, and I don't mean the... Mean the secondary mutant head crab or the gravity yeah. cannon guy. Um, no, I mean, there's a D and D player that is now harassing whiz kids about the, oh. the green dragon or whatever, the adult green dragon. They're like, when's that sculpt coming out? So now they're getting pull towards hero clicks that haven't been released and towards their D and D products. So it's like, finally the D and D players strike back going to social media to demand, where is my green dragon to which I say, couldn't you just paint a normal dragon green? Is there something special that I'm missing about the green? Yeah. Like, do they look that different? Couldn't you just paint it green? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe so. How curious. How very curious. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't know, dude. Like, wh why would you have an issue with D&D? &D? Like, of all things to have an issue with. Maybe that's just because there's so many D&D &D players. There's got to be some people that are mad about yeah. whatever. For literally, <laughs> I want to say that this is guy's free to play. Doing totally it just free to, to play. You Hero don't need players. miniatures, technically, you know. Like, you don't really need miniatures if you don't want, if you don't want to. You can just no. make up Use everything your in your mind. Yeah. You can literally just mark down on a board. Like, you don't even have to do that. You know, it's like, oh, if I am I within five feet, and the DM can just have all the markings himself and be like, no. And I was like, okay, well, I'll move my 30 feet or whatever. You know, like to complain about something that you technically don't even need. Um, 
is wild. What what amazing what what D and D players? Goodness gracious, what a guy to complain. I say that. I mean, but we we and I'm just trying to justify why we complain. I guess I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyways, guys, follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Uh, obviously, you know. Hey, download the podcast on a few different uh, a few different whatever you know a few different platforms. Why not? So do all that stuff, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, definitely. We really enjoy making uh, HeroClix YouTube content. If you want to see a lot of the games that Simi and I will be talking about on the show, uh, you can now watch those in real time on our YouTube channel. We did a we do tons of fun, obviously, skit videos where I did like do you even clicks, the pitch meetings. Uh, and Simi and I obviously have the fabled uh, holy grail of our YouTube videos being the uh, Extreme Rules videos, as well as we're doing these really fun, uh, you know, pre-release team building unboxing videos uh, we did for Rise and Fall. So if you want to start, check all that stuff out, check our YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to support the show, do so on Patreon.com. That means a ton. It lets us get better equipment for the podcast. It lets us do all sorts of fun stuff for the YouTube. Um, and we give away awesome uh hero clicks every month and also depending on the tiers you are at you can get fun stickers that we have that are like old feats and battlefield conditions you can also get tokens so if you have a sky tyrant and you need some endless resurrection tokens we have those if you need aries pogs we've got a ton of those in a very hilarious uh style and we had like great made up by people we're gonna debut our lex luther bizarro green light pogs here really soon so stay tuned guys we have all sorts of awesome like bystander tokens and like you know for all this rise and fall stuff the shiar flag the courage or confidence tokens excuse me the rise uh the cake whatever the slice of cake the that said rise of cake nope that ain't it cake uh you know rise. all that stuff the goodie bag like you're gonna need these kind of token guys um and as far as i'm seeing we're the only ones that are really producing tokens like this right now so definitely jump on our patreon to get yourself some sweet tokens and yeah, it's it's just it gives you a real uh, bang for your buck, I would say. Yeah, real bang for your buck. And if you want a real bang for your buck, make sure you use code Dial Five and head on over to CoolStuffInc.com, where you can pick up cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Rise and Fall uh, set. They, they, you know, they surprisingly they increased the prices on some of the stuff when they restocked. And lowered the prices on some of the other stuff. So um, it's actually cheaper now to pick up like super rares, but slightly more expensive to pick up the generics when they're restocking them. Uh, they were sold out of Sentinels last I checked. But you can pick up one of everything that you want over on CoolStuffInc.com. And make sure you let them know that we sent you by using code DIAL5 when you're buying non-singles. Because if you're buying singles, you probably have a better discount by now. And like always... Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some. Let's attack Jimmy because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.